Welcome to the June 14th, 2016 meeting of the Milton Conservation Commission. The Commission is appointed by the Board of Selectmen to implement the rules and regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Milton Town Bylaw. Uh, two matters of formality. One, we have a tape running uh, in compliance with the open meeting law. So if you wish to address, and we invite everybody to uh, address the Commission, ask questions, make comments, but please identify yourself for the purposes of the record. And secondly, we always introduce ourselves. Judith Darrell Kemp. My name is John Kiernan. Michael Blute. Arthur Doyle. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we have an agenda and we try to stay with it, um, but we've also got uh, a couple of requests for continuances and so that people don't sit and wait and then uh, confront <laughs> continuance at the request of the applicant. Uh, I don't want you wasting time. So I'd like to go to uh, number seven, I'm sorry, number eight, abbreviated notice of intent, 50 Robin Street. We have a request from the applicant to continue that. We also have a concern expressed by um, neighbors and, and people that have an interest that if this continues to be continued, it becomes uh, onerous and burdensome. And uh, it may be that uh, some of the witnesses I know, I know one of them cannot show on the 12th of July, which is our next meeting. So we will consider the request for continuance. Um, but I, if there's anybody here on 50 Robin Street, I'd ask that you identify yourself and, and Sir, would you, would you kindly stand and identify yourself? And just Can you tell us if, if it's an inconvenience to continue this? I think we're going to have to do it until August because I know that one of the abutters is not available on the July 12th date. My name is Skip Weiner, 24 Robin Street, and I've been involved in this since 1984. <laughs> Sir, could you come forward just to get on the mic? Thank you. Thank you very much. You're not just addressing us, it's those thousands sure. of people out there who watch on TV. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> that. <laughs> My name is Skip Winery, and Two. I reside Two at 24 Robin Street. And uh, the next house would be 50, would be fi or 50. Uh, the, the house that's structured now is uh, Stewart's. Uh, Stuart Harris. Dr. 50, Harris's 54. House, precisely. Uh, I've been involved in this since 1984, I believe, maybe even earlier when this first came up uh, for, um, for hearing. And uh, we've been coming to meetings steadily every time that this is on an agenda. And I, my sense is, I, as I speak to the committee, is this, there's got to be a limit on this. This just keeps on going on and on and on. And you know, how much more are we gonna learn about this particular plot of land that, that, uh, that, they, that uh, they're proposing to put a, a house on? Uh, so from, from my perspective, and I'm just one person involved in this, but I, I, I'd like to strongly say I would like to see this resolved. All right, were you at the last meeting? Yes. Okay, so you know that our consultant yeah. did testify. There was another uh, request for a continuance at that time, but well, because she's, she's on the clock and being paid, right. uh, and it was on the schedule right. uh, and on the agenda for the open meeting law, we actually had her testify, yeah. and she indicated that um, she disagreed with the lines Correct. as proposed by the applicant. And, and they've had an opportunity to, to respond, as I understood, and it would have been this meeting. That, they that asked was my understanding respond. as well. And here, here we are. All right, we have, I guess we have two choices. We could actually call it for a vote, but we, we have to do that knowing that there's been a request by the applicant to continue the mm -hmm. case. Um, so our alternatives would be to have a vote, and really the only evidence we have is negative because uh, Lenore White came in and said, those lines are wrong, and we have nothing to, in contradistinction to that. Um, so the other alternative would be to continue it, and I'd suggest not one month, a two and say this is the last time we're going to continue it um, because I'm concerned that the applicant is not here and unfortunately that's a that's a, a consequence of calling in by phone or email and just saying please pull it one more time I'm I'm very concerned that you've shown up I know mm -hmm. Dr. Harris has been here several times mm -hmm. uh, and there may have been other neighbors I, I'm not sure they about. have they have right? um, but I'd, I'd actually I'm kind of open to either one of those either to call it for a vote or to continue it not to July, but to 
our agreement to continue would be contingent upon A, it goes two months, and B, this is, this is it, this is the last time. Correct. Yep. Well, um, I don't want to play devil's advocate, and I don't mean to imply that the uh, property owner is the devil by any means, <laughs> but I want to make sure we do this fairly, and I don't know, John, that we've ever called for a vote like this. I think it would be That's the first why time. That's proposed an alternative. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be reluctant to. I'm very sympathetic to your position. Thank you. It doesn't make sense that you keep coming back. And in fact, this was withdrawn for a while, wasn't it? For one month and then right. put back on again. So it's really, it has dragged out unfairly. But so then do you move to continue this for two months with the condition that this, will, this is the last continuance? <laughs> and the condition that it's except it, it coordinates with um, Dr. What's his, uh, Harris. Harris's because we know that he's interested, he has a, and, he, and he's, he's not a, available. A butter. But we need to verify that, that, that the August meeting is acceptable. Correct. That you Let's assume that we will have a vote at two months. Assuming that, yes. assuming it's acceptable. But let's just follow meeting. through. So then what would happen? If we did vote in the negative, then what would their next step be? Then it would still continue. No, a, ne a negative vote? The, the only thing they could do would appeal yeah. to uh, DEP exactly. for a superseding order. Exactly. And the only thing in the record that we've got is the original proposal, which is, by the way, I think the fourth time that's been uh, delineated. I think and so. And then we have the Lenore White anyway. saying the line is wrong. Right, right. And then we have, I don't know, many pictures showing where the skunk cabbage was. Exactly. did exist exactly. and was then removed. Right. But proceeding in that way basically tells them that the August meeting is the meeting to attend or it's, we're going to vote on the, that's... We're going to vote, that, period. Okay. Vote on period, so right. fair notice. Okay. Fair notice. And if yeah. they don't come, it's on them. Okay. okay. Any comments? I just feel the applicant has had um, so many opportunities yep. to present the case. And sure, uh, you, you guys have been doing this for a while, and I, I trust your expertise. And let's go with that. If, if, if we could set August as being... Absolutely, positively, the last time we would see 50 Robin Street on this agenda. <laughs> Kathy, what's that August possible? meeting day, I, it, I think it is possible. The only caveat is that um, part of my motivation is that I've seen Dr. Harris here on several occasions, yeah. mm -hmm. and I know that he cannot attend in July. I yeah. do not know if he can attend in August. I'll clue him in. I'll, I'll email him in the morning. And that meeting is August 9. Okay. Um, did you raise that? I think you had the motion because you um, oh, okay. so added more. to it, and I will second. Okay. Okay. Are there any other comments from uh, about as uh, members of the public? Any discussion among the commission members? To, uh, deferring to August, contingent upon schedules. All in favor? Absolutely. None. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much all right, for all you do for us. All right. Uh, Is there any ne yeah. uh, next, uh, I think there are some other ones that are being moved so that people don't have to wait around. Um, notice of intent 167 Woodland Road. Uh, that's actually the same. <laughs> Our consultant is the same, and their wetland scientist is the same. Um, but that, that re that nobody's here. Is there anybody here uh, to comment upon or oppose? Uh, 167. It's also 151 Woodland. It's a little confusing as to which address it is. Um, but hearing on that request is for July 12th. I don't see the same need to kick that two months. But if um, is anybody? No. Nope. Right. I do not. So do we agree to continue that? All in favor, continue it until July 12th. Done. Okay, that's July 12th. Uh, next, order of conditions 395 Hillside Street. That's been withdrawn. Is that correct? Anybody here at 395 um, Hillside Street? All right, that's withdrawn. Uh, number 12, informational meeting, Shade Tree Advisory Committee. That's withdrawn and continued until the September meeting, if anybody's here for that purpose. All right, done. Now we go back to number one, request for determination of applicability. That's the town's new animal shelter on Randolph Avenue. For 167 Woodland, that we're going to come to a decision at that meeting too. That's my assumption. I, I hope so, but we, we haven't we haven't I received have to see. we haven't received any I, opposition to yeah. her her uh, delineation. 
All right, thank you very much. Okay, I'm William Clark, Director of Planning and Community Development for the Town of Milton. And with me is um, Tim Zawinski, Assistant Town Planner. Uh, we are here this evening for um, a request for delineation of applicability on a site that we are looking, that the town is looking to build a new animal shelter. It will be off of the, um, what you may refer to as the access road, the landfill road, dump road. Um, it's on a parcel of land owned by the town uh, under the care and custody of the Board of Selectmen. The idea on this is to place the, um, place the new animal shelter about 50 feet from the current access road. We'll meet the different setbacks within the area. Um, the project site is a, just under four acres. It's about 3.9 um, for the entire parcel. On it, the, the, exist, the plan that we brought in had four wetlands identified of that four different. Bill, Bill, could you actually walk up here and show people what the, you know, their outlines is so they can see more graphically? what the actual outlines of the lot is and such. The outline of the lot is here, goes up to Quarry Lane, across the front of Quarry Lane, back down. These are the Ash Tree Playground parcels uh, owned by the Park Department. This would be the access road. The access road leads up to uh, the current Quarry Hills project. Down here is a road that leads out to the uh, gas take station out on the boundary of uh, Milton and Quincy. Um, there is a gravel road that runs around the base of the main hill that makes up the Quarry Hill Golf Course. We're just opposite that. That road would be right here. Um, presently, this is the particular parcel that we're dealing with here, here. We're looking to use just the bottom corner. So we'd be looking at the southern portion of the property. Uh, we're not looking to take and bring it back into the majority of quarry holes that are up in this area. Um, we have a, we had Lenore White go out and flag the, the wetlands that were out here. She did um, this wetland, she did this one, we did this one. This one's far enough that we're never... I, I'm sorry, she's, in her first report, she said she only did two. The first two that you pointed. She did these two. The first she report does not address that she didn't flag that. She didn't flag this, but she verified that the flags are there, that they were there. But we're not going up here. We don't want anything to do with those. We're sticking just down in here. So we're looking at this particular wetland system here. We're not moving up into here. Um, this is a quarry hole, quarry hole is down, there's nothing around the sides. Um, we'll leave it there, come back the 100 feet, but it's still, we're more than 100 feet from there. There's the line that we want. We want to build in this particular corner. We don't want to wait. Where's the building footprint? I, I know that pink piece of paper this, is there. This piece of paper is actually 80 by 60. This is much bigger than the building we're going to be building. Oh, okay. Um, it just happened to fit. It just happens that it meets the, um, with the ruler, with the scale, that you can get 80 by 60. We may wind up with 80 by 40. We're, we're not exactly sure where we're, how the building is going to lay out in this area. Um, the idea is to get this wetland identified, deal with the wetland line here. We'll go out to, um, we're going to have borings done down in this area to figure out what it's going to take to fill the area and how what we're going we know it's going to be a building on slab we're not digging in this area it's all it's all little quarry holes it's all ledge we know we're not going down so we know we have to fill it how do we best fill it we have the um, the boring company coming to give us the idea of what and where we should be filling, what we may fill, what we may have to move. Um, our access intends to be here. Our parking would be here and here. Uh, we'll file a notice of intent after we get a design from the architect. The idea right now is to be able to put together an RFP for the um, for 
and I repeat for architectural services. Can you comment on the vernal, whether there's a vernal pool in the adjacent lot to the left? This isn't one over here? Yeah, isn't there one, isn't there a? Yes, there is, there one is yes. Right about here. So that one needs to be tracked as well. Um, I know that it is on, I think it's right here. It's on a plan that you have. I know it's not coming onto the town's land. The 100 foot doesn't come into the town's land. It's like here. Okay. Can you add that? To, do you have that information? Can you add that to this drawing just so it's all in one place? I think that's a good idea. I mean, if, if we have it, we should locate it, right? Even if it's not. I think the answer is yes. I think you're actually going to get to yes by bringing up Mr. Celebrity for his issues as they relate to here. And if he wants these, he has to give us these. So I think the answer is yes, and I think we're getting to yes when you call your next. Is that on the agenda tonight? That, that's the enforcement order at 41 Pleasant no, it Street? No, wasn't on the agenda. We didn't request them to be present tonight. Why don't we let people know what we're talking about? Right. Yeah, actually, for the public's benefit, we were out on May 20. 8th, 8th, 28th, mm -hmm. we did a site visit. And when we were there, uh, there were a couple of areas of concern. Uh, the only two that were flagged for us were this area and this area. I'm sorry, this area and this area, these two. That one is, is far enough, enough, far away, enough away that it really doesn't affect this proposal here. The other one that did affect it, uh, or could possibly affect it, was this one. We went over there, and as we looked... This is the development off of Pleasant Street that's currently... This isn't. That is. That one over there, one. yes. They've gotten there, so, yeah. Oh, sorry. We're still on the town land here. It right. backs up to uh, Mr. Carroll's land. Um, but while we were at the site walk, um, there was tree clearing going on, and a lot of tree clearing on the 41 Pleasant Street area. Um, and we were not comfortable with these flags because they didn't exist. <laughs> They're on the map, but they weren't on the ground. Um, and we had you know, questions about this area right here. Um, and we had questions right here. There, was, there are two, we'll call them quarry holes. They appeared to be wet, but it might be just debris. So we asked the town to have Lenore White, the wetland scientist, go back out and look at this area and this area. Twofold reasoning. One is it'll help us make the decision on the town animal uh, uh, shelter. And also it will define the boundary of where they can clear because they were clearing right here. Now it's clearly outside the 100 foot mark from the flags as they currently, well, where they used to exist, they're actually not there. Um, that's why we needed it reflagged. Now, has that been reflagged? No. No, there's one flag in there, and it's B7. That's only because you can't get in there to get it. Somebody took out the flags because they were at the top of the quarry hole. That one's down inside. You'd be crazy to go in and get it. All right, and now this one is also the potential vernal pool. Mm -hmm. uh, now, again, the vernal pool... It's, it's questionable the vernal pool because it's on uh, the National Heritage Site. Um, we don't really see that there's any wetland um, material anywhere around this because it's a, it's a rock that, going that, in. that doesn't have to be. You could have a vernal pool that's right, just rock-bordered. And that's what we have here. But right. I, I'm, I'm actually interested in that, but it still has the 100-foot non-disturbance right. zone, but it's still a 100-foot line. Yep. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a different issue, really. It's not going to change the border for Mr. Celebrity and this project over here. Right. We were concerned with the tree clearing that was going on, um, and we asked him to stop. And historically, last fall, when we actually uh, permitted the town water line that cuts through another vernal pool, which is over here, uh, we made a decision to allow the, the town water line to go within that 100-foot area because it had a, a greater benefit to the town and there's no significant adverse impact on the environment. So that went through, but while we were there, we asked the applicant for this development to uh, delineate these wetlands, um, but he never did. Now, I was hopeful that the town and the applicant, Mr. Celebrity, could get together and use the same plant, because it's the same land, and, um, and that's what I was hoping for, that we mm -hmm. could get to that point today. It doesn't, from what you say, it doesn't look like any of this is wet, which right. will mean that, that uh, we don't have jurisdiction over his area on lot, what's that, lot four? And that's lot nine, I think. This, this is nine, that's five, four. four. 
right? So four and nine were our concerns because we thought there was wetlands here. Uh, and that's where we all looked at the, we all stood and looked at the quarry hole and said, mm -hmm. boy, it looks wet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But could, could you address I, I that you, issue? I got you a note yesterday and I had already done, I had already had Lenore out here last week. I had made arrangements the day that I, of the site walk, to have her come back to do this. The first day I got her was last Thursday. So you're, um, she looked at this and she was just like, she goes, I'm not ready to take and identify, I want to do a vernal pool study. She thought she was just coming in to redo flags that had already been down there before. This one was easy. This Couldn't she do harder. an isolated wetland? Under the she, town bylaw, that's an isolated. She, and she said that. Mm. Right. She said that in a report. She said that these two were just, you know, isolated subject to flooding, but they have no wetland value. Correct. But they are jurisdictional, and you're asking us to fill and flatten. In this particular area, yes. This one we're staying out of. And if you want her to come back, we'll get her to come back for this. But you want to identify the vernal pool? No, I, I'm. Even. It's not going to affect your building, the no. town's building. Right. It, it could affect uh, Mr. Celebrity's <coughs> project if there is wetlands, uh, even isolated wetlands, outside of what's marked on your map towards uh, lot four. These guys? No. that's, that's what, Yes, correct, correct. We walked this whole thing coming in this way. Yes. We walked back this way, and she didn't find anything. Actually, you come up this cliff, and you're... You went up the cliff. I, I was there. I was just concerned that there, there was some, there's a lot of rock there, but there are a lot of low areas, and I didn't know if there, were, if there was hydric soil there. Yes. We didn't see any. If you want me to have her come back for this, I'll bring it back for it, but we'll, we'll have her back for the notice of intent. It's just identify where this is so we can start. Yeah, but, if, if, but if we say that that's not wetlands, then you notice of intent, it's just going to go right by us. This is the wetland. I'm inside the 100 foot. I have to file a notice right. of intent. Right. Um, all right. It would, it would be good if you could give us a plan that shows where the footprint is. For the notice of intent, I can. Right. But, once, the, but once, we say that's, once we say that open quarry hole that looked wet to us. Yep. Um, you, you seem to be going right by that. So if we approve this plan, then your notice of intent is, is only, you're, you're clipping the corner of the 100-foot buffer. Felt that, right, she felt that the two areas that we identified on the sidewalk did not have... Qualify. Um, they didn't qualify for a wetland. Yes, they qualify under... Um, the Town of Milton has their own wetland protection bylaw and regulations. Pursuant to the review of the Town's wetland bylaw and regulations, Wetland Strategies, Inc. notes that the definition of wetland resource areas of areas subject to protection does not differ from the mass regulations. Therefore, WSI opines that the two undefined isolated areas are not subject to protection under the Town's wetland bylaw. That's these two areas here. Yeah, that, that's assuming that they're, they're not wet, and if she's found that, that um, that's true, I mean... That's what she said. Right. Hmm. Bottom line, the second one from the bottom. Right, again. Yeah. All right. Uh, now this, I say this recognizing that you may not have an obligation because we are intending to put the animal shelter is clearly outside the 100-foot mark from the, that other area. But if you could call her back and ask her to look in that area with an auger to see whether or not there are yep. hydric soils there, that would satisfy both us for the animal shelter and it would satisfy our, our enforcement order for Mr. Celebrity. So you could, you could yes. do that with one I, I just don't want to hold up the animal shelter, though. Is that going to hold up no. your... No. If, okay. you, if you identify this, I'll get this. <laughs> Trade-off, huh? <laughs> oh, I don't, ha I don't have any problem 
I know what you want. You well, want we this can... thing here identified, and I'll have her come out with the rocker, and we'll go through here. Okay. I don't have any problem with this. My only issue is this and this. And she came back and gave you an answer on these two. I've got it. If she could help us there, I'd I be eternally grateful. One. Yeah, but we can vote on the RDA now. Yes. Right? We can, we can resolve the RDA and, and the contingent upon revisions to the, to the plan. Mm. We don't need to wait for them to revise the plan to say that it's a, that, that it's a, it's a positive determination. We already know that. We're not, we don't have to sign off on the plan. No, not on the plan, but the RDA will, will verify the, the, the lines that are on that plan right there. It's not done yet. So well, you want to wait why, until... That's the next question I've got. Are you satisfied that the contours... No, I'm shown? not. The so contours are... The, I'm not satisfied that the contours are right. I'm, actually, I'm sure that the contours aren't right. Okay, so then... Based on the sidewalk. Based on the sidewalk. They ourselves. were all over the place, and this shows, this shows a nice... Right. Even pitch up and doesn't, and it, that's laid out based on one foot contours. And we saw things that were going on that were two or three feet deep that should have shown up on the plan. So, but that's probably going to be part of your process when you develop that end of the site for the building. You need to evaluate it. And I have no problem and saying that, that this is a, that it's a positive determination and that the contours and the wetlands that are still being evaluated need to be defined before we, before we sign off on the plan. Oh, that's fine. Oh, sure, it's we'll positive give you, determination. We'll give you the boring logs, too, so you'll be able to see. Yeah, so that's perfect. There. That would be great. Yeah, so we can just, it gives them the go-ahead. Basically, see we can give them the go-ahead today, and we not, so we won't. we do the boring logs. Yeah, and we won't, we won't, we don't have to sign off on this as a plan. We can say that it's still in process based on additional information from con conditions we mm -hmm. saw on site. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? I mean, I, sure, want, yeah. I want to pull sure. the trigger on. I'm fine with that. Yep, I'm in. Any okay. comments from uh, about us, questions, members of the public? Sure. I'm Rob Salaverde, 3341 Pleasant Street. Yes. And I do have a combined plan for the town. Oh, good. <laughs> Rob Salaverde, 3341 Pleasant Street. Um, Currently doing the um, the development on Pleasant Street, and I do have a combined plan. If uh, I could pres present it here, sure. Um. Have you seen this bill? No. Could we get copies after the meeting? Sure. Thank you. Um, I'm for the project of. It seems like a good project. I just have just two concerns in regards to just um, a buffer. If maintaining a buffer, because I'm a direct abutter, that's someone's backyard on lot four. Yeah. And the, just the. Her building would be in here. Right. right. And the blasting aspect of it. Here's our wetland points on here. Is there 100 foot from their buff there? Thermal pool. So do you want to grab the mic while you're up there? And this that. was Aug, uh, <laughs> October of 2015. Right. So that's the subdivision plan you're looking at, the approved subdivision plan. And yeah. eight homes with a unbuildable lot. Right. So if I may. Sure. This is the approved subdivision plan. Um, this is the utility easement that was approved mm -hmm. for the water main for the animal shelter. And what we did is combine the two plans, the, the wetland plan that you, that you have and my proposed plan. So you'll see the 100 foot buffer is here. This is lot four, this is lot nine, and this is the other 100 foot buffer right here. All right, and you see, I don't know if you could see from where I was, but on your plan, we had concerns over here. Oh, but uh, but okay. this has got nothing to do with you. But okay. we were over looking at this, and this is the one where Lenore White went back and did testing and said okay. that it's not uh, subject to protection. Okay. And the other area was over here. Uh, there were some low spots that looked like they could hold water. We didn't okay. know if those were wet because this had not been flagged. Okay. Now, I don't know how old the, this designation is, if it goes back to Quarry Hills, the golf course. No. How, how old we is it? We did those, I think just in 15, early 15, we had those done. By whom? I had, it was not, I had Lenore come out here for 15. Um, Scott Morrison did them originally. 
Scott did them and somebody else did them too. There's three For sets of play. That's why there were three sets of play. There were three sets play. here, but, but they weren't there. There were two up in there. Two. There are two sets of flags up in here. Scots were down here and were blue. These are blue. Ours were striped. The, the word, they uh, were. They were. We the, didn't see the right. striped ones. But hers are striped. When she went in, she found them right away. Here? Yes. Yeah, they know that. But there, but there were no striped the ones there. there. No. But, but we know that those got... Scott did that for the... Um, those are the athletic fields for the park department. Going where? Ash Street? Um, primarily it was on Ash Street, but because of some of the ledge up there, there was discussion about sliding the, the new park down into the Selectman parcel. Okay. It just never came to fruition because of the amount of ledge in there. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So um, from what you see on this, we've got wetlands here and here, but you are... It looks like you're outside of our jurisdiction. Right. Okay. Right. So, so the only issue is this area here. But if he says he can get Lenore back there quickly, and from what she found here, I, there's probably not going to be an issue here. Because right. this actually looked a whole lot wetter than that, although there were lots of areas that were low and looked like they could hold waters. How fast do you think you can get it back there? I'll try next week. Okay. I want her for another project okay does that all make sense yeah yeah mm. all right we, yeah, we, we've got we've got two issues here though because mr celebrity has an enforcement order against him right, uh, right now and we don't I, I don't know because bill and i were standing together sure i don't know who was on the other end of the phone it could have been you <laughs> it, oh it was okay um because we really don't care right. about property lines right, right we just measure from the wetlands it so, doesn't matter who owns them right um, so we just wanted to make sure that line was correct, and we said go ahead with the clearing uh, over here. Okay. Um, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but that they continued there. Yep. This area here was where we were concerned with. Correct. So we said hold off on that. Right. So we just what we did was we're not doing any work here until we get this resolved. I relocated the temp fence exactly on the property, property line, line here and lot nine. Okay. And lot nine, so lot nine right here. So you'll see. Um, he did. We were out there when Le Lenore and I were out there last Thursday. They were in place. The fence had been moved. Remember here how it's all ledge? Yeah. So Mr. Celebrity took the fence and moved it in a little bit so that he was on the property line. So, well, he was off the property line. He was on the next door neighbor's property. But you could put a fence in there versus this one come up over the top of the rock. Right. So now it goes up over the top of the rock. He did take and leave some of the, um, the, the logs, the, the cord logs. Cord, yeah. So that it would. Okay, the waddle and. Thank you. The waddle. Okay. The waddle is there. The fence is up where it's supposed to be on the on the line. The waddle is back here, so that it does catch anything that comes off the rock, comes out of that area. Okay. I think we can kill two birds with one stone. We have a positive determination without approving that, not that, the plan under that one, the town's plan. Agreed. Because we need, we need the, the correction of the contours. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so a an, uh, better understanding of the wetland Sorry. condition. Right. Correct. All right. And then we'll expect from you after that a notice of intent for the building itself. Yes, And then absolutely. at the same time, I'm just trying to figure out how we don't interfere with your construction schedule, because it looks like from what she found over near lot nine, um, I'm going to guess that this, she didn't say anything about the area closest to lot four. Correct. Yes. So there's no work in lot nine. Is this, that future this, development? Is lot nine a... Hopefully. Hopefully. Not <laughs> yeah. But um, not, not at this time. No, this is not buildable at this time, right? right. So right now it's eight homes, one, two, three. There's lot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. There's no work in this, this area right here. There's no work. Right. So, um, you know, there's a sufficient buffer. And, uh, All right. I'm just trying to time this so that if we anticipate where we're going, we don't unnecessarily slow you down. Right, right. If, if Lenore White gets back out there and confirms that there are no wetlands between 
here. Whatever we, whatever we call this area and the edge of lot four. Okay. Then we can, we can remove the enforcement because right. it's non-jurisdictional. But we don't want to wait until, well, you tell me. Our next meeting is July 12th. We can probably craft something that we can move faster. July 12th. Doing a site works? I don't know. Do we have any site works? Yes. 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 We'll have to do some site works. All right. So that we, we can resolve it at a, we need to do it at a public meeting. Right. There's, there's no work. On, we could, you know, that's okay. We, there's no work on lot four. What we're doing right now is bringing in the utilities for the roadway. Okay. So this is important right here. Okay. If this, this, this can be lifted, the enforcement order related to the utility easement can be lifted, then... That's fine. That's, get, I, I thought that was where we said go ahead. installing a water main, and the, there's testing and chlorination, and there's all this thing, all, you know, there's a lot of stuff associated with bringing a water main. So if we could, this could be lifted. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, our, our concern was right along sure. the, the, this edge yeah. right here. That's all right. Fine. So if, if that's true, then you can either wait till the... Uh, we'll have a public meeting at the site walk, which will be on a Saturday morning, sometime between now and July 12th. Okay. And if you don't, if you miss that for some reason, we can do it July 12th. Yeah. Does that make sense? So July 12th, we'll have to. Well, we can do it. We'll probably do it outside. earlier than that. Yeah. Site if you walk. can, yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, we fine. are literally bringing in the water main right now, so we just, right. you know, so if we could, that'd be possible. Just stay in touch with Kathy, sure. and she'll give you the date of our site walk. It'll sure. be a Saturday morning between today and, so it'll be sometime in June. Okay. I think. Okay, but he's just looking for the water main. Can't we give him permission he's got, to he's got do that? that? Right. That, he, he, that he has, was not part of the enforcement order. Yes, anyway. you have permission to run with that ahead. Okay. No problem now. That's, all right. That's not holding you. That shouldn't be holding you up at all. Right. This right. lot four is not. It's a non-issue. It, we're not building that house. Okay. Well, it's, it's lot four is our concern. Okay. So that was, that's great. So you're good to go. Okay. But let me just ask. Um, it's not our jurisdiction. I'm just being polite and kind of nosy. Um, are you <laughs> are you taking down lots of trees in this area? Or are you trying to save some trees since? Uh, sure. Yeah. There's a the the planning board has a specific phasing plan on uh -huh. how we take down trees. Okay. So basically take down trees associated with the roadway and the, road, the right of way. Obviously, we need to take those trees down. And then once we submit a plan for the, for the homes, we have to submit a landscape plan. There's a whole phasing plan associated. So the trees that we heard you taking down when we were out there was for the road or for the utilities? Uh, it's for the roadway. It's the roadway because the cul-de-sac ends uh -huh. over here. <coughs> and we were, this area here is a huge... This has to be all uh, hammered down to elevation, roughly 138, because there's a huge outcrop of ledge right here. You mentioned blasting earlier, but you're just talking about whole rim, right? Um, when we proposed this, our project, there was a restriction on blasting right. because of the vernal pool and right. all that. So, it, so when they do this project here, there's a lot of ledge right. here. So if that, you know, you're going to have to put foundations in you know, four, go four feet below, whatever. As if that restriction could be, you know, consistent. Consistent. Yeah. Right. But you're not doing any blasting. You no. Know, there's a restriction everything, on that. Everything is just. I interpreted right. your blasting yeah. comment to be with reference to the animal the shelter. Town, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. That's the way I interpreted it too. Right. The animal shelter. Right. Okay. When, when, they're, when they're building this building. And the other, the other comment I have is, you know, I'm for the project. And if there could be some type of buffer left here with the trees, right. that's, you know, on the backside here. Because this is going to be basically somebody's right. backyard, and then you have the visual aspect when you're looking down the road. You're going to be able to see the building here. So if there's some type of buffer, well, you could leave a buffer as well on the end of that sure, well, on your property. Sure, we, we are. Yeah. But this, it's difficult here because there's a huge. Di there's right here. There's a huge valley. The ledge just dips down right here. So there's not many um, in the back here. There's not many trees. There's a couple of trees here, but which was going to remain. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Just, I think just, we... for, just for Rob's reference, um, what, once we get into the, um, the design phase, um, we're going to be engaging with all of the abutters and, and stakeholders, so you'll get a message about that, too. Great. Um, so. yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. So we have a motion for positive uh, determination on the RDA without approving that particular plan. Correct. Yes. Not the one that's up there now. The one yeah, that's right. That one. That one. Right. Okay. Presented. Right. right. I, I had a question about that. Um, so, what, one of the things that we're interested in um, the the RFQ for design services is is almost ready to hit the street. This is sort of one of the last um, 
boxes that we need to check off. Um, so I, the, the, the goal is to sort of put a package together for applicants um, for this RFQ that has all of the site conditions, everything that they would need to know um, before they would bid on this project. Um, so I, I guess in terms of like the timeline of not approving the plan but approving the determination, what's the documentation of that? Um, and, and then what's, sort of what's the timeline of? If you can get it uh, to us by our site walk, which will probably be two weeks from today, or two weeks from, I don't know. What are we looking at, the 25th? Somewhere around the 20th, it'll be June. Um, so we, we can do, what's that? This Saturday, no? Father's Day weekend. Oh, Father's Day weekend. <laughs> so the 25th? <laughs> yeah, 25th. He did uh, my father for the first time. <laughs> oh, <that's right. laughs> so what's the next weekend, the 25th? Yeah. 25th, um, uh, July 2nd. No. 25th, 25th. 25th. Right. Everyone to make the 25th? Yeah. Yes. So, do, uh, will you be able to make that, the 25th? Well, it depends on the more coming up. Okay. But you can do the contour I clarification. Can't. You can't do the 25th? I, sorry. I have two conflicts on that date. What's the day, the 14th? What's, what's this Saturday? The 18th. We could do this Saturday. Can you do the, can you get it to the, eight, by the 18th? I could do the 18th. I know what you just said. It depends on Lenore. Yeah. Can't turn it around that quick, yeah. No. So it goes the 18th, the 25th, the 2nd? Or the 9th of July. I can do the 2nd? The 2nd is the 4th of July weekend. 4th of July weekend. You had a sidewalk Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> what else are we, what else are we, <laughs> we did. Could we do this? If she's available, we could do it on the 18th. I lost. Okay. It's worth it. So we'll, we'll sure. do a contingent. Because the, product, the further we kick it out, the more pressure there is on this stuff. Right. Celebrating. But there are other site walks, so we need to schedule it. We need to schedule it. dangerous timeline, too. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't call yeah, it dangerous. We need a definite. But <laughs> <laughs> and also, we it gets the more dangerous. Right. Why not the 18th? <laughs> I mean, Father's Day is Sunday. Why right. can't we do it Saturday? That's right. That's what we just said. Oh, I thought we were still talking about it. We are, only because he doesn't know if he can get Lenore White out there that fast. Okay. Because Miss today's that. Tuesday, so she'd have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to do it. Sounds good. And she's got to write it. She's got to get out there and do it, and then she's got to write it. Turn it around and get it to me. So let's give it a try. And then uh, we have a contingent plan in back of that. The 25th, if you're not going to be there, we're going to lose a, a quorum. Well, unless she goes back. I don't, I don't think she's back until July. Do you know, I'm not sure when she's back. I'm not sure. So the next week would be the 2nd of July, which is okay with me. It's okay with me, too. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right? Yeah. All right, so the first date will be the 18th, and if we can't do it, we'll do it July 2nd. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Perfect. All right, thanks, all. Thank you very much. We, we need a motion on... Oh, did, we, didn't we, we already do. vote? The no, idea? we did not. No. No. Oh, we didn't vote. Okay, so <laughs> there was a motion to uh, a positive idea? Mm -hmm. Not accepting the current plan, understanding it needs to be revised. Okay. Correct. Any discussion? All in favor? None. All right, all set. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Bill, will you stay in touch with Kathy, and then she can inform us whether or not it'll be this Saturday or... Yes. A few Saturdays out. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Next on the agenda is a uh, request for determination of applicability, 1183 Randolph Avenue. This one should be quick. I hope so. Right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> My name is Jim DeSell from DeSell Birkin Associates. I'm here on behalf of the Copelands uh, All right. for a request for determination of applicability. <laughs> From the uh, Memorial Day weekend site walk, um, I believe we made the modifications to the plan that the board uh, requested.
adding the uh, Liberty Elm. Right. And for the public's benefit, we actually went out to this site um, to view this, uh, what we're looking at now is the plan. This is uh, behind the, the old Pepsi plant off of Randolph Avenue near Newcomb Farms. Um, and this is land that's actually under agricultural use, which creates its own exemption from the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, however, we have uh, we've have a sort of agreement in concept that an area will be replanted which protects our 25-foot non-disturbance zone from the wetlands uh, line. We actually, on May 28th, we went and we walked this line and verified the accuracy of the delineation. So it was not on the agenda. We couldn't vote then, um, but we have already seen it, and so we bring that knowledge to us tonight. Uh, but Jim, go ahead. Uh, we propose a, a planting line with signs along the 25-foot no disturb line, um, and we had, uh, and there's a list of the, the plant list on the uh, on the plan. Um, that will create a, a buffer and a screen along that 25 foot that people will be clearly notified stay out of this area. And then inside of that, we had the, uh, the shrubs uh, in that 25 foot no disturb area that has been disturbed. We added some shrubs, which, witch hazel, uh, arrowwood, pepper bush, and American hazelnut. And then at the site walk, we were asked to add three uh, Liberty Elm and we we'll spaced them out evenly in that area. Well, I love the planting plan. I think it looks great. I think it's very exciting to think maybe the Liberty Elms, which is a, it's actually a cross between the American Elm and a couple of genes of a Chinese Elm, and they're doing really well. So it'll be fun to see if uh, these five trees or three trees do well in that area. We'll be kind of monitoring that. So I think that plus the uh, the tupelos uh, and the gray birch, I think it's a great design. How large do the Liberty Elms have the potential they to grow? They can get as tall as an American elm, so oh, that could sorry. be... I, I'd okay. say 200 feet. I mean, oh, really? you know, you know yeah, yeah. 50, 60 years from now, yeah. And they have a 100 year lifespan, or? Oh, more than that. More than that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a good question, though. I yeah. bet maybe 200 years for an elm, yeah. Now, this is an RDA, Jim. Yes. But is, isn't this in response to the enforcement order? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, do we need to, if we approve this with a negative determination, uh, approving this line? then that would be grounds to vacate the enforcement order. Correct. Correct? Okay. I just want to make sure everybody's on the mm -hmm. same page. Because yeah. we've had two th there is an enforcement order existing. Uh, and that was because trees were cleared uh, in this area, um, I guess, last fall. And we responded to that and said, don't do any more clearing, don't do any more plant, don't do anything until we figure out where the wetland line is. And that's what we've done. Um, so is there a, are there any comments? Questions, suggestions from abutters and members of the public? Any other questions from commissioners? No. Is there a motion then to, uh, I think this can be a negative determination, approving the plan, you know, con Correct. conditioned upon the approval of this plan um, with the planting plan. Um, and then at the same time, that will remove the enforcement order. Yes, Correct. I would move for that, absolutely. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, 1581 Canton Avenue. Good evening. Good evening. Julie Erickson, Erickson Design Associates in Norwell. Representing the applicant. And I'm Dave Wamister, 1581 Canton Avenue. Welcome. Can you tell us about your um, application for notice of intent? We are requesting permission to build a garage to the rear of the property. The current, there is a current structure on the property now and we are requesting to remove that structure and build a new structure seven feet behind the position of the existing structure. 
I'd like to highlight that it is positioned on a knoll. There's a drop off on both sides of the property. The proposed structure does clip the buffer and clips the buffer only. The Clips, existing structure it's more than, it's more than half of the, the uh, clip is a, a term of art maybe. I, I don't know what it means, but it's more than half of the proposal. The existing structure, rear right corner, also is in the 100 foot buffer. And then the new proposed structure would be similarly, but to a greater extent. Right. Okay. No, I'm just, I'm, you know, I appreciate your advocacy, but you said to a slightly greater extent. It's actually a lot more. No, I said clipped. I didn't say slightly greater. But it, it says right here, to a slightly greater extent. It's highlighted. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, so we are requesting permission to build this structure. Um, and it is positioned, as I said, on a knoll where there's a drop off on both sides and it's really the only spot that it can be positioned. The existing structure is a 20 by 22 foot outbuilding and the new structure would be 30 by 32 feet. Um, can I ask you a question? And this sure. is not, not really substantive, but on your project narrative, um, I get lost in paragraph two and I, I don't know if it was just a sort of an artifact, uh, but if you see the, the last sentence, I wasn't sure if there was something missing. No, I don't think there was anything missing. Um, the wetlands below outside the limits of the proposed missing report to okay to the north land. And the, the sentence is not completed. So I would just, in that case... I, I'm, I'm not being like your fifth grade teacher. Just, I didn't mean just, that. Just I just don't... Those spells that I think the wording was changed and that those last three words can just be removed and deleted. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. I'm sorry for that confusion. No, no, that's, that's fine. I just didn't know if I was missing something. No, certainly not. Okay. So I'd like to open up to the board. Any questions? Is there a potential to move it further out of the wetland? I mean, I, as I look at the site, it looks like the usable yard is, is to the north, is that north? The north of the existing shed and moving it so that the new garage is further to the south, southwest, wouldn't that allow you more yard plus move it out of the... There is a significant drop off um, on... The land drops off on both sides. Yeah, but I'm just wondering can, if you move it further to the to the southern edge, to the top of the drop off, that gives you more of your yard back, but it also moves it further out of the wet, out of the buffer zone. We tried to be a little sensitive to the landowner below us. Okay, so there's someone down. else. Exactly, there's, there's a home down there. Okay, uh, one of our neighbors lives down there. But the land on both sides was filled in the 1860s yeah. when they built the home, and on each side there's actually a retaining wall on their side. Uh, the opposite side, the northern side, drops off down to Hemingway Pond. Okay. So there's about a, it's about a 10 foot elevation drop right off the side. Of, it's almost like a cliff, basically, going down onto the town property okay. on each side. And then the wetlands are obviously down at the base of that elevation drop. There's a, a note on here about the existing septic system, but there's no indication of the area of that septic system. Is the proposed garage appropriately located? not to be an issue? Yes, yes it is. We okay. believe so. yeah. I think we want to see this, just to be a little more assured. Uh, I mean, believing everything you're saying, I, I think I know this site from the street. It drops down quite a bit. Significantly yes. on yeah. both sides. Yeah. Yes. And it's an old house, isn't it? It is, 1860. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to what you're trying to do, but I think mm -hmm. we, it would behoove us to go out and actually look at it. So we actually removed, there was a, a structure there when we renovated the house about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a two family home that we converted back into a single family home. And there was, uh, this two car garage was existing. We, we utilized that. It was a single car garage that was over on the north side, right on the edge. So it would have been fully within the, the 100 foot buffer. Sure. That was removed when we renovated the house. So one of the structures actually has been taken down that was within, within that buffer. Okay. That's gone. Um, something that we've, re we've required in the past in terms of new garages being built adjacent to um, a, um, 
a buffer area, mm -hmm. is that they that you incorporate a curb, a concrete curb around the perimeter of the garage, so that if there's ever a kind of a fuel failure or an oil leak or anything like that, that it's contained within the footprint of the garage. Just would need to be a four inch car curb when they pour the, pour the slab. when they pour well the, when they pour the footing, they'll they'll pour the footing high and then they'll pour up against that. But but. Um, We'd want to see the construction details that show that, that you're going to do the... I mean, it's a simple thing for the contractor to sure. do, yep. and it gets us a containment. Basically, it treats the perimeter as a containment. Or a lost antifreeze or... Yeah, exactly. yeah, antifreeze or anything like that. That way we know it's within the garage and it can be cleaned up as opposed to running underneath the wall, the sill plate or something. Sure. And would be yeah. happy to do that. Okay. Yeah, why don't we go out and take a look at it? Sometimes... Um, okay. Sometimes we come up with all sorts of new ideas that are helpful and we don't charge any money and uh, people sometimes <laughs> go along. Fair enough. Uh, are you available? We're going to try to do it this Saturday. I don't know if you heard that last discussion, but we're, we're bouncing between the 18th and the 2nd of July. I, I can try to make myself okay. available. Sure. And the only thing we need to do is because if we, um, I don't see the plan as an issue, that there may be something that we could tinker with, but when, when we verify the line, we get stuck with it. So we, we like to see where the flags are. And this was flagged by uh, South River Environmental? Yes, sir. Okay. I, do you know, is that, I know Hemingway Pond is close by. Is uh, that, is it like top of bank or what's this based on? It's you based know? on the, I believe the board, Board of Vegetated Wetlands. It's based on the Board of veg Bordering Vegetated Wetlands to that pond that okay. you're mentioning. The pond is off, off site on town right. land. And then the, the line of the this is the this line delineates the limit of the bordering vegetative wetland. The second line delineates a 25 no build, and this third line is the 100. Oh, okay. okay, right. I mean, sometimes we can eyeball. We don't pretend to be experts. I mean, we have some sense and and some yeah, no, you'll sensitive be able to areas. See it. You can we'll be able you to can see tell. It. Okay. You know, yeah. All right. Exactly. Kind yeah, we don't we don't want you to go through the expense of you know bringing in a wetland scientist with an auger and you know. Having us say test here, test there. Most of them are easy for us to see. Some of them not so much. <laughs> this one I think will be pretty easy for us. Okay. All right, fair enough. So um, if we go, on, we don't, I'm just trying to figure out what the schedule is. We can probably rearrange it. We can rearrange you, you it. You can arrange the, the, the order, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. We try to do it so there's some logical sense of where we go throughout the town on Saturday morning. Place to um, place. Yeah. Right, so that if you stay in touch with Kathy, you can figure out what we're going to shoot for uh, this Saturday, and if we can't do it, we'll do it Saturday, July 2nd. Okay. okay? Great. All right. I have one question. I was curious as to why the proposed um, building garage doesn't start where the existing one is. We wanted to get a little bit more room for the cars to maneuver, to jockey in there. The car, the Existing driveway, it's kind of L-shaped. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll see that when we're on the sidewalk. You'll see it when it gets there. Okay, yeah. thank you. There's an existing L that we park cars. We come in and take a right before the garage. You really can't park a car in the existing garage, so the, the cars stay outside. So the purpose was to have a place where we could put the cars away. Basically. Thank you. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Hopefully, we'll see you this Saturday. Okay, Great. thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Next one is, uh, next is uh, Notice of Intent 65 Winthrop Street. who is the owner of this property. Uh, we've uh, obviously filed a notice of intent uh, for 65 Winthrop Street. The proposal is for a 308 square foot addition uh, to the house. The lot abuts Pine Tree Brook. I shouldn't say the lot abuts Pine Tree Brook. The, the lot abuts town property that abuts town, uh, Pine Tree Brook. And you can see the two lines on the plan. The first line is the 100 foot uh, riverfront area. The, one that's way off of the lot to the uh, upper part of the page is the outer riparian 200 foot uh, riverfront uh, offset. Uh, the house is an existing home. It's been, 
it's listed in the assessor's records as being built in 1965. And the side yard offset to the house is 10.5 feet. The requirement is 10 feet. And we went through a few alternatives uh, looking at options on this. One, one was putting it closer to the brook, which obviously isn't a preference for anyone. Uh, another option was going up in the house. This is a split level home and the cost uh, was just far too ridiculous to, to go up that high. We involved adding staircases and ripping roofs off and all sorts of things. <laughs> so what we ended up with is uh, where it's shown, which is uh, the orange block there. That's the addition. It's, again, it's uh, 308 square feet. Uh, you can see a portion of it's within the 100-foot riverfront. A uh, portion of it is between the 100 and 200-foot uh, riverfront. The good thing about this area is there are no trees, uh, so that's just going to be uh, excavated, removed from the site, and the, the addition will be built. Uh, the timing on doing the addition is obviously going to be dependent on uh, the commission's uh, uh, decision as well as uh, any possible appeals. I don't expect any appeals on this. It doesn't affect anyone. I did speak to the neighbor uh, to the north. Uh, he had just recently put the, he has a fence, there's a fence along that uh, northerly property line that he's put up in the last, within the last year. So he's aware of what's going on, and everybody seems to be on the same page out there uh, as far as uh, the work that's proposed. Uh, we are proposing hay bales and uh, silt fence. Um, the reason that I decided to put that on there versus something like a silt sock is as the foundation gets excavated, there may be small piles of dirt, and instead of a silt sock that's six inches high, I would rather have something a little taller there okay. to just ensure that and you know no, nothing uh, nothing escapes through it or over it so this lot is about 9800 square feet um, the proposed addition uh, is 308 square feet it's just about a little over three percent of uh, the lot size um, again uh, we proposed uh, the erosion control uh, as I said uh, to prevent any piles of dirt, which uh, hopefully will not be too extensive from migrating towards the wetlands. And uh, like I said, any excess soil on the site is going to be trucked off the site. There's nowhere to put it. Sure. Um, there's, there's no reason to put it on the lot. Uh, so that will be removed from the site. There is a uh, kind of a squiggly purple line that kind of goes around the house. That's the 100-year floodplain, elevation 34.4. Um, so none of this work will occur within the floodplain. Uh, it's strictly going to be within, uh, unfortunately, the riverfront area. Now, just to the north of the stream, uh, there is a gravel path. It's a walking path that mm -hmm. uh, goes up to the street and also works its way to the west uh, off-site to, to other properties. And from there, the, it actually rises up a couple feet before you get actually onto the lot. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of, I guess, already man-made disturbance between the stream bed and the lot. Uh, the, lot is, the lot itself is completely stabilized. It's uh, all lawn. There's some trees in the, you know, a couple of trees in the back uh, corner. There's a, there's a shed uh, and that type of thing. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, obviously we're restricted because of, uh, you know, the, the day that this uh, house and lot were created. Uh, and we've done our best to put this addition to the furthest point possible from the stream. And uh, we think we've accomplished the intent of the uh, Wetland Protection Act, the Rivers of Riverfront uh, policy also. And I guess with that, uh, I guess I'll turn it over to the commission and see if there's any questions or comments. How about uh, roof runoff? Do you have a, uh, like a dry well or? I, I don't have a dry well. What I did, and I didn't submit it, I just wanted to do it just to take a quick look, but I did run uh, a difference in pre and post runoff calculations, and it was under 0 .01 CFS was the difference, um, which would have literally no effect whatsoever on, on the brook. There would be no increase in flood elevation. There would be, you know, the runoff would be negligible. Um, 
you know. I, I, how about neighbors? I, I, I understand that this, um, the contours, I assume, are running towards the brook. They but, are, that's correct. But is there any flow to either Grove Street or um, 61 Winthrop? No, the way this all this would flow is it would actually flow from what you're seeing is the addition and it would flow towards the river. Any question? Um, I, I'm, do you have a uh, second erosion barrier along the southeastern yeah, edge? Yeah, I, I put one there. Uh, I, I put one there in the event uh, that a truck was not able to get in on the north side. Sure. If they had to come in this side, there wouldn't be any disturbance except for tire tracks, tire tracks. basically. Yeah. But if there's any excavation in that area and the dirt gets on the tires or whatever, I'd rather have that up than not. And it's obviously up to the commission how, how you'd like to, to write it up. Um, but my suggestion would be you, you don't, they don't have to put that up unless it's decided that they have to go in that way with a truck. If there's going to be any access through that area, then that oh. erosion control needs to be put up. And you feel that there's adequate clearance on the the... So it's, ten, it's only it's ten feet. It, it's ten feet. Uh, you get a concrete truck. They've got the long, you know, the long shoes sure. that they can put in. I've seen it in tighter spots. Yep. Um, so I think there is. So uh, the, where's the ten feet? The ten feet is from the addition to the to yeah. the new fence. Okay. Yeah. Any excavating equipment that's going to be stored on the property? If any equipment is stored on the property, it's going to be done within the furthest north erosion control area. That's not a big hole. It shouldn't, it shouldn't take more than a day to excavate. So right. frankly, I, I don't think it would take, uh, or there would be any need to keep it's it. It's a frost wall. It's not a full foundation, right? Uh, I believe it's a frost wall. Yeah. Don't hold me to that, though. Yeah. Well, one of our concerns, a lot of contractors will come in and, and they kind of ignore our, we have a, what I call a boilerplate condition, and that is that you can't store equipment or refuel um, overnight. Right. And I can see them parking it in the driveway. Within the 100 feet is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, your driveway is within the 100 feet, so that's, that's I think, the origin of the question for right. Mike, is that we don't want that equipment stored there overnight. You've, you've got to get it out of the 100 that's foot exactly buffer. Right. Okay. I mean, again, uh, you know, there's plenty of room for a small excavator in that northwest corner of the lot if they needed to keep it there. Correct. But again, right. yep. Correct. You that's, know, if it takes that's, them more that's than a day to excavate right. this right. hole, there's bigger problems Something. out there than. <laughs> now, Mr. Walker, you're a professional yeah. engineer. Yes. And this, um, when I looked over what you submitted, I thought it was one of the best things that we come across. It was very thorough. I appreciate it. And it was excellent the way you did the alternative analysis so that we didn't have to start wondering what, you know, what options there were. I thought, you know, submitting the pictures, you did a really thorough job. Um, I'm not sure. I went out, it was cloudy. And <laughs> <laughs> I look at the pictures, I'm like, this isn't really doing it justice. I, I'm just wondering why you don't work more in Milton, because uh, this, is, this is really good work. Yeah. I'm actually just, uh, I'm dumb helping out a buddy with this oh, one. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, anybody want to see it? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. I just, my only concern is the drywall, and I, I would, even though you're saying it's negligible, I would still say that we should... We should talk about putting a drywall, having put a drywall in. Okay, There's something maybe. maybe we could, uh, you know, maybe they could, in the condition that uh, once once it's constructed, we can evaluate the runoff, like uh, whether you know, go out during a big rainstorm, check it out, see what the deal is, and if people don't come back to us, no. <laughs> well, that's why. That's why if it's in the order, they usually wave goodbye. That's why if, if it's in the order of conditions, it kind of gives you the right to check it out and say, yeah, yeah. you need to put it in. Um. I'm not sure where groundwater is out here. Yeah, that's a good you know, question. That's, that's the well, we, we, have, have, we have seen conditions where the perk is zero, you know, so uh, it's, not always, it's not always beneficial. Right. Right, so yeah. um, 
Well, it's not a cost factor, though, I don't think. And it, it would be minuscule in terms of disturbance of the... No, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a cost factor. I mean, it would take up room in their yard if they will ever, somebody ever wanted to put a... I mean, right. Well, you've got, a, you've got an excavator there anyway, to, so it's, you're talking about a couple minutes of a guy with an excavator. Yeah, there. and, they, you know, frankly, they could stick it in that 10-foot side yard because nothing's right. going there. Right. So, I mean, if that's... Yeah. I, I'd, I'd actually feel more comfortable with it. Yeah, I would too. Um, that's... All right. And I, I don't see it as a design issue or a cost issue. No, I'm if just... I'm wrong, you tell me. No, I mean, that's fine. We'd stick a few infiltrators in there. And... Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Do you have that? No. A drywall for the uh, roof runoff? What I'll we'll probably ask them to do is stick two or four of those plastic infiltrator Perfect. chambers in. Yep. And yep. it'll come down, we'll have the Y connection. One will be connected in, and anything that's ever, you know, if you get a 100 year storm, sure. there'll be a regular Y connection, like a regular gutter. Okay. You know, gutter yep. downspout discharge. So. It's good with me, good Thank with you. you. It is. Thank you. That's good. So the conditions of the drywall and no storage of um, vehicles on the property, correct? No, not on the uh, property, not within the 100 foot. Within the not within the 100 right. foot. And that, there is a place to store if they needed to. Um, but, we, you know, we've been pretty consistent staying with 100 foot. I, you're still within the 200 foot, but we always say the 100 feet. So you've got that corner if you needed it. Yeah, and if not, then they can, they'll find somewhere for it. Okay. Yeah, if, they don't finish, if, if they don't finish in a day, they should be, Plus they should be forced to go anyway. So. Starting early that day, right? <laughs> Are there any abutters? Members of the public, questions, comments? Hear a motion to issue an order of conditions with those conditions that we've already stated? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Good. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank okay. you. Nice presentation, too. Yes, it was nice. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda. Is uh, 111 Forbes Road. 118? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, 118. Attorney Bob Sheffield. Uh, I represent the uh, the owner, and uh, with me is uh, Jimmy DeSalle. <coughs> and uh, we're proposing here an incline elevator um, uh, on the uh, coastal bank, uh, going down to the uh, wharf, uh, part of which is on the uh, owner's uh, property. Um, can, can you? Um, that's something that kind of escaped me. Um, who owns the wharf? It's the property line is essentially through the middle of the wharf. Sandy. Sa Sandy built it though, right? Yep. Yep. And who are we talking about? Sandy who? Sandy Will. Okay. We've, we've been out there a couple of hundred times. At least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's yeah. the next door neighbor. <laughs> but you're familiar with the, uh, uh, the topography there. There's about a 40 foot. Uh, uh, difference in elevation between the uh, the wharf and the uh, top of the uh, coastal bank, and uh, this uh, is an incline elevator which will uh, minimize the uh, uh, disruption to the uh, habitat and uh, area. If uh, just from an alternatives analysis, um, because when I read this, I, I know the sort of the underlying rationale is access to the water to the wharf. Um, is there an agreement uh, to use the, the walkway down there? Through, you know, I don't mean an easement, but is there, a, and I understand that if it's not an easement that maybe it wouldn't go forward into the next owner uh, if Sandy decides to sell, but um, there is an alternative way of getting there because he gets The only way the of getting there is to uh, go on somebody else's property, and that's the, uh, uh, that's the problem with it. Um, uh, and uh, they do not have a right um, I'm not saying that it couldn't be worked out. I'm not saying that, uh, but I mean, there is no uh, uh, easement or, eagle, uh, or uh, legal right to use that uh, walkway down. 
and that walkway down is actually uh, you know pretty uh, uh, pretty steep. We think that the uh, use of an incline elevator will be uh, uh, safer, more practical, um, and uh, will uh, Im improve the value of the property and improve the usability of the loft. Uh, have you had any? Um and I know that, it, it, that John and Shelley are very um, uh, sensitive to the, to the public. Um, going back a few years, Judith, do you remember there was a, there was a bit of a furor when um, that hill was clear cut? And I don't know if it was done for I construction quite purposes well. yes. or if it was for view purposes or and what. It was replanted somewhat. Some, it didn't really take very well. Not too but well. I know that the, the, we had issues. Um, with the Garden Club, the mm -hmm. Milton Garden Club, and people were upset because as they looked up river from um, Milton Lower Mills, it, it just it, it looked like it was shaved. Um, it's got nothing to do with John and Shelley. I understand that, um, but, I, I'm but I'm wondering about what what's the. It's a sensitive the, area. It is a sensitive. That whole area. hillside is sensitive. It's all filled land. Oh, it all it's all filled land. The the fact of the matter is. Uh, uh, when uh, Kenny Hospital was uh, constructed uh, years ago, uh, that was the dump. Um, but what was constructed? The Kenny Hospital. Oh, I thought it, I thought it was the expressway too. But the Kenny Hospital. No, was it was back not the expressway. Um, it was the Kenny Hospital, I believe, came before the expressway. It did. A yeah. And um, um, the old Kenny they used Hospital. that. Pardon me. The old Kenny Hospital. No, I think the new one. No, the new one. When they were excavating that one. When they were excavating for the construction of the okay. New County Hospital, right. right? But there's there's a lot of in some of those sites. There's a lot of brick debris. Well, there's a lot of brick debris, and there's a lot of um, uh, right stuff. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been an interesting excavation hole. Yeah. Uh, yes, in fact, when they were building the house, it uh, created uh, significant additional uh, problems and costs to. Uh, put in a foundation because uh, what was under it was uh, uh, not what it looks like. Right, pretty soft. Mm. Hmm. That's why in the proposal we're talking about um, um, uh, putting in the, uh, uh, the pilings uh, in, in one way and if, that can, if we can't hit solid ground then we'd put in uh, cement uh, pilings on a, uh, uh, you know, almost as a hand. Sure. Yeah, right by the riverfront, you're going to do this construction. Yeah. It's all by hand. Did you do an alternative analysis? On the, I, I, maybe am I missing it? No. We, there's a, in Jim's narrative, there's what we looked at originally, if you put in a set of stairs or a ramp, it would be much more detrimental because of you'd have to to get the grade to make it possible to even get down there it'd, it'd, it'd be a lot wider and you'd have to you know a lot of switchbacks and things like that so there'd be a lot more disturbance to the slope what they're proposing here is pretty much just a rail system which are pipes that are uh, hopefully they're going to be uh, uh, piled into the ground with those little hand tripods with weights on them um, and if for some reason in spots this the debris is it's too deep or we can't get any, to anything solid, there will be hand dug uh, and they would put in a footing for that specific pipe and then they'd go back to the tripods and right. pound in old school. Um, and it's all done by hand. There'll be minimum cutting uh, because we only need that swath where the, the little With tram's the gonna go right. down. And that's the only area that's gonna be trimmed and maintained. And there's virtually no, there's nothing to, you know, have water go on, there's no roof on it. It's just, you know, a pipe and, a, a real system, so there's no runoff or, and yeah. once, it, once it's done and, sta and, the, and stabilized, it, there's, it's just like, a, almost like a chairlift. So if people are at the wharf and, you know, they're looking for the eagles or the cormorants or whatever, you're going to look over and see natural, natural trees and shrubs and hopefully some birds, and then there's going to be a tram coming down the hillside made of metal with a little bus on it or There'll something. There'll be two rails. Down. There'll be two rails, and that's what will be visible. And between the rails, you'll be able to see 
uh, the, uh, and the And the natural. justification for building this right next to the Neponset estuary is? What? There's a question mark there. I, I don't know what the question is. What, what is the justification for building this? I mean, to impose on the estuary something of this magnitude, to construct something that made of steel or metal, whatever. I, yes, looking somewhat like, can I say an amusement park ride? It, that's what it looks like. Um, I'm not sure what the justification is for this. To access that dock. Well, wow, that my memory, and this is going back to the Sandy days. But if that if that's 25 feet wide, my memory is that the next lot's got about three feet, and he's got about 22 feet. It's got to be 90 percent Sandys, and no, it's right I down the middle. It's, no, I think it's, it's down six, the middle. 60 40. It's a, it, I, when yeah. we it was originally designed back with the old plans, when when we did the retracement survey, the old plans indicated it was dead smack in the middle. It got rebuilt, and our line is a little bit off that in the center. Now, whether it moved a little or not, it is a little bit more heavy on um, sandy side, but not by a lot. It's all staked out. It is staked and out. And it's accessible, and they have room down there to do yeah. what they need to do. Sidewalk? And we can see it on a sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, How did they get to, to the dock before? How did anyone get down there before for the last 200 years? Sandy's the only one that's been using it. Sandy's the only well, the one that's been using it. Before Sandy redid it, it was a mess. It was, yeah, it's so actually, I, the, I think it's the oldest commercial dock in the country. Yes. Yeah, I think so. And the, and other, and the Keiths have not been there that long. That's and the other thing is that the uh, Keiths uh, purchased the uh, property upon the death of a 104-year-old uh, woman who really never used the dock. <laughs> All right. Well, you can get to the dock by going to Town Wharf and getting in a little boat and going down <laughs> to the wharf. Or swim for it. Or right? swim for it. <laughs> swim from Dutchess. All right, so we take a look? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, are there abutters or members of the public that have a thought, a comment, a question, a suggestion? Um, do we have, uh, I, I, I'm not soliciting necessarily opinions, but I know that the Garden Club was vociferous in their objections to the clear cutting. This goes back, what, 10, 15 years? I don't know. I can't remember. But they were, yeah, they were all years. over us. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there will, won't be any clear cutting, and we can go over and at I the think, walk. I you know, the uh, what, uh, now, and you know, the Yard you know, Club there yeah. that uses that whole area is probably um, going to be interested. All right. A couple questions. So the way that the the way that the construction information and that's included in this implies that it's built by a homeowner. Do you have a contractor that specializes in this kind of work? Yes, yes. yes. In fact, we have the uh, illustration in there of uh, yeah. one that he did in Plymouth. Um, can you submit information about the contractor in terms specifically of where he, uh, how many of these he's installed, the conditions of those installations, all of that? Because my big concern is the destabilization of the, of the, of the um, slope. Right. So the, basically, they're talking about going down the slope and driving these posts in and basically you know, cutting back whatever they need to cut back in order to be able to set those. Um, the assembly, to me, doesn't seem to be as, as robust as I would have expected um, in terms of the, the metal, the, the, the spacing of the, of the supports, the gauge, the size of the posts, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know that digging things by hand on a slope that steep is effective and not more detrimental than um, a different strategy, and I don't know what that strategy is. Um, and most of my concerns revolve around the ability to actually put it in place. Okay. Um, so if we could, if in, during the site, if you get that information and bring it to the site walk or have the contractor there, you know, a, able to talk about it and, and their strategies in terms of um, if they are, they do find that there's nothing under there, and they start blowing it out by by slamming the posts in. We we want to understand where that's going. Okay. Okay. Um, and the, the, just looking at the stuff, it doesn't look like it looks like a very lightweight piece of equipment. Um, and um, I'm not sure that that's to anyone's best interest. Um, 
Yeah. I there know. is an alternative in here, and I, I, I can't, I know I read it, but I can't remember where I read it, whether or not it's in this marine innovation section, but if it doesn't work by hand, there is a, an alternative for With cement. power equipment. Oh, no, the, 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 the first strategy is to do it do with the pile driver, which is a pedestal yeah. with a weighted, uh, to drive them straight in. The alternative is if they can't get them to go in straight or they can't get, they can't like get bearing, kind of thing. They, they end up digging by hand to pour concrete. Right. And I'm not sure that, that given the steepness of the slope, and it's really a conversation with the contractor. Yeah, um, I haven't done as, it. What? I haven't done it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just trying to understand it because yep. on a steep slope like that, I could, and the fact that it's all fill, I could actually see you're going you're gonna to be doing a lot of it by hand. And, mm -hmm. and given the gauge of the equipment and, and how they do it, I could see that being more destructive and destabilizing. So even if, even if the assembly was something that, that, um, that functioned, it might need to have more done to the slope beyond just the installation of the, of the equipment in order to make sure that it's not going to slough off and you know water getting into it drive, driving down at the post and, yep. and basically uh, you know landslide kind of thing mm -hmm. you know uh, in wet conditions yep. so um, if the contract is available and you can provide them with the, the, their information and and be available to have that kind of a conversation that would be great okay that would be fine yeah okay I'm a little confused about your notification of a butter form that you sent out the name of the project is proposed single-family house do you say anything about what you're building? Yes, in the uh, in the abutters notification, it uh, refers to the mm. uh, installation of a new cable and carriage elevator to access the wharf over a steep terrain, and proposed work um, being more particularly described in the notice of intent. Can we see? Can, actually, that. I'd just in terms I'm of just thinking oh, actually, that people. That's the ad I put in the newspaper. That's the ad. Yeah, where was the actual oh. letter to letter. about us? That's what I'm curious about. Well, this is actually says that the, the, the installation of an incline elevator. It's not the title of the project. It's the title of the incline elevator. It's not the title of the project, it, but it is in the description of the project. Yeah, it is confusing, though. Uh, yeah, to permit the installation of an in incline elevator. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I may have missed this. I was very interested in the metallic composition of the rails and the supports to the rails. Um, we'll have somebody at the site walk that it? can um, Great. explain Thanks, that. Mm. Yes. A lot of it is, but uh, we'll have the experts. Good. Hey, can I ask you a question? Um, you know, I, I, I keep going back to this picture. Um, and it might be just a, an aesthetic issue. And I, I think I know the answer that the, I think you've already said that putting in a set of stairs would be more invasive to the slope, or at least maintaining the slope. But if you look at the picture, and if you gave me a choice as to which one I'd prefer, that steel structure doesn't look very beautiful. Well, part of it, of course, is the fact that uh, this was taken probably the day after the installation, and um, the the, um, the metal um, tones down in color, um, you know, within a few months after the, uh, uh, you know, explosion. It's rusty. Fits <laughs> right in. It doesn't <laughs> rust. It won't rust because it's... But the, you're taking the position. But the uh, oxidation would uh, yeah. tend to minimize the reflection and the brightness of the metal. You're taking the position without any evidence that I'm aware of to back it up, that this is less detrimental to the slope than steps would be. If that's the case, why do you see steps um, you know, in so many sloping hillsides on Cape Cod or on the South Shore? It's typical to see. You don't normally see this. If this is preferable, um, why do people put steps in? Of, because it's cheaper. It's, right. Can, just because of the cost. I, I took a, um, one of the sessions at um, the annual MACC meeting on uh, coastal erosion, and the greater the openness, as represented by the track system, the much more consistent with the environment, the environment than steps. Most steps are put in improperly. Um, they're closed. Uh, they're put in 
on a 90 degree angle where they're supposed to be put on in on 45 degree angles and so on down the line. So there's a whole evolving science in this that's uh, based upon experience leading much more to open structures than the closed structures that we've had in traditional stairways, the stairwells. So you're saying that this, in fact, would be preferable in your view than the From steps. From what I was hearing in that course, that class, yes. Not, not all, every step looks like what we're seeing much, on the side. Some of them are very simple. It's much more supportive of vegetation as well. And what they do in some instances with wooden walkways now is, is elevate them three feet up off the dunes right. rather than have them as Board they have traditionally yeah. been, yeah. boardwalks very close to the surface of the dunes. So we may be seeing this up and down Cape Cod and you, when we are walking. Could very well. All yeah. over the place. And you see it a lot with um, the ramps that they use for boats. More and more of those are being used now because they do less damage to uh, inclines than you'll mm -hmm. see with stairwells. Plus they can be pulled back. So that when the erosion occurs, you don't have to rebuild your stairs. All right, so we have a site walk maybe Saturday, the 18th, yes, maybe July 2nd. Uh, stay in touch with Kathy. Um, All right. And she'll set the schedule, too, because we've got to figure out where we're going in the town. So yes, uh, no, I, I understand that uh, would be available on uh, the, uh, the 18th, right. um, Saturday morning. All right. All right, I think I asked if anybody had a comment, but uh, yes, I'll ask did. again. Hearing none, we'll see you either Saturday or Saturday. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Jim. Thank you. Um, that was the last sentence. Oh, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are for 750 more. Open. Next on the agenda is uh, 20 Ridgewood Road. That's the thing. Concern is the thing here. Are you, is it just compiling a problem in terms of erosion and, and the integrity of the, of the slope? And although the steel wall looks aesthetically better, it's more of a problem. It's more of a problem. Just because of how it's done. Yeah. And it's built for aesthetics rather than for nature. Right. And like the thing you could you could paint it black or a dark green. Oh, oh, oh that's the. Uh, the I wouldn't even that's see That's what it. I was asking the composition yeah. about. Painted. painted the color that the bikes would blend in, right? Got it. Exactly where and rubber wheels on the tro on the trolley, so it's not it's not wearing away at it. All types of things can be done. I'll see if I have any materials from that session. That was years ago, or recently? No, this, this year at the um, Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions at Holy Cross. Yeah. It was really good. Oh, nice. Teaming with Finally. Finally, Teaming? somebody put it in there. I was yeah. two years I was before. Yeah. 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 Oh, really? Good, good. First year. Well, yeah. I say also, it's like a damp area. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Teaming at the seams. Hi, good. Good evening and welcome. Could you identify yourself, please? I'm Debbie Anderson. I'm the Wellens Consultant. Welcome. And I'm Christy Dennis. I'm the owner's representative. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, and this is a notice of intent, so tell us what your proposal is. I just wanted to start off that we don't have a DEP number as of yet. Okay. Um, I was in touch with Jim Freely over there today, and he was hoping to get it done today, but I don't think he has. Okay. Last time I checked, so... All right, why don't you proceed anyway? Sure. So it's an addition on the back of this existing house. It's about 360 square feet, um, and it is within the 100-yard buffer line, as you can see on the drawing. Um, unfortunately, the, the line of the buffer isn't as clear as I would like, so if you need us to, um, we, have a, we have another drawing we can pull up also if you want. Let's see what we've got here. You said 100 yards. You meant 100 foot. Right. I, I certainly you did. did, yes. <laughs> 100 yards, we wouldn't be here right now. You know, one, one thing, when I, when I first looked at this, um, uh, if you could add in that 25 foot non disturbance onto your plan. Okay. Okay. Because it just, it just helps us. It, it's not going to affect what you've got here, but it helps us visualize where things are. And are these. Um, these flags are top of bank uh, yeah. on the, on the, in one area, and then you've got another one that's 
BBW. Right. So there is a perennial stream. I believe it's called Cook's Brook, <laughs> which... <laughs> I, 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 I can't tell you how happy I, I am to hear you say that. Really? Everybody comes in and says, oh, it's intermittent, or it's, it's only damp once in a while. And so for you to no. say perennial stream, oh, thank you. It's perennial. <laughs> it does. Thank you. It flows from east to west through the... Um, Hang on a second, second. okay? Where? We just have to get our recorder going. Thanks. You were saying about the perennial stream. Yes, so then it flows uh, from the east to the west on the um, abutting MDC Blue Hill Reservation property to the rear, and um, then flows under and ends up over in Russell Pond um, is where it discharges. Um, the approximate riverfront area on the lot is 29,580 square feet. Um, proposed alteration within the riverfront area is approximately 40 square feet. Uh, let's see. The project is an approximate 410 square foot addition with a 190 square foot pervious paver patio and 60 square foot deck step area um, to reach the patio. The closest point of construction is about 85 feet from the bordering vegetated wetland. The erosion control is set at 75 feet from the bordering vegetated wetland. There is a large area of ledge between the existing house and the, um, the wetland river um, area, and that is where they're proposing their um, work. So it's really confined between a large area of ledge and the existing house. Comments, questions? Uh, the pervious pavers. Um, what is, what's the proposal? Um, it's not determined definitively. Maybe something like bluestone. Okay. What makes you say it's pervious? I didn't realize we were saying it is. If, it, if it's required to be pervious, we can work with. No, you. no. Are we just we just want to we just want to make sure that we're yeah. we have concerns about runoff. Sure. Uh, both mm -hmm. in terms of the addition, and we, you heard us talking earlier about yeah. uh, wanting uh, dry wells and control of that. Um, in the larger scheme of things, it has the potential to cause, you know, larger problems for people downstream. Of um, so we'd like to take every advantage we can to, to control um, and collect any water that falls on that so that it's dealt with locally on the site rather than mm -hmm. as well. Um, the map is saying Ridgewood Drive. It should be road. I just, it just needs to be exact yeah. if you're submitting. Okay. It's I not that's drive. Right. Otherwise, you won't find it when we Google it. It's road. Any um, questions from about us, members of the public, concerned citizens, commissioners? Should we see it? Should we go to visit? Yeah, I would actually. I would like to. So, can you actually explain the plan a little bit? There's the detailed proposed addition plan. Looks like there's an existing notch in the back of the house with That's steps correct. go down yes. so is that the intent is to fill all of that in yes. and the new the new portion that's right mm -hmm. do you want to see a, a i mean a floor plan or yeah yeah that'd be great okay. yeah if you have that sure. and then there's a bump out on the back that's only what two feet yeah that makes more sense when you see the floor plan. yeah um so just briefly this is the rear of the house now this is yep. a the main house, and this is a garage addition. Yep. And these are the steps sure. you're referring to. Um, this is the ledge, and this is the area that mm -hmm. we're, we're staying within that little fence, more or less. And so, the addition is going to come out primarily this way. That little bump is just to allow us yep. to do a more work sure. kitchen. Um, and then there's a small addition behind it. Okay. Um, I, I changed my mind. I don't think we need to, looking at the photo of the back of the property with the ledge that's there, um, my only concern with this is making sure that there's adequate control of uh, stormwater runoff. Sure. Um, so as long as they include something for that, mm. it, the, I don't think there's an issue. No, but I don't want to approve a line unless we look at it. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. 
do. And I did bring up um, any kind of infiltration to the um, to the surveyor, and he mentioned that the amount of ledge um, on it's the site. It's prohibitive. Sorry. It's prohibitive to that's get, what to get he, something. Yeah, that's what he explained to me. Okay. But I'm sorry. Know. What's prohibitive? Well, the fact that the, the 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 whole site is ledge. Right. So there's no place to put a oh drywall. Okay. And what, I mean, do you have calculations as to what the increase in runoff is from the roof? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, I mean, we, we should have that. We should, but we should also look at the site and determine whether or not um, there, there might be nothing right now. I mean, it's basically if it's impervious now, putting the roof over it really isn't going to make a difference. It's right, it's going to. But does it mean that there shouldn't be now? Yeah, it's got to be someplace. Okay. There. I mean, the whole the whole area is. Look That's what we did on. Visit. Look what we did on Wendell Park. There, we had them move the water around, and it worked. Yeah, I think. Well, it might be as simple as introducing uh, a diffuser. Yes. But rather than a concentrated flow, it's a diffuser or something like that. Correct. Okay. And there is only a, I think, 190 square feet in the buffer zone and 40 square feet within the riverfront area. So okay. I think they thought it was such a minimal area in jurisdiction that they didn't look further into the drywall as well. Okay. But this Good. is Can a great site. Some, yeah. This is a great site. You've, you've got Blue Hills behind you and also on the side. Yeah. So it's so okay. private. Yeah, it's a great site. So you'll give us a couple of things. One, the 25 foot on the uh, plan. Uh, two, get some uh, Calculations for the runoff, and, and a strategy. I mean, if there's no way, if there's no way for to incorporate a dry well, mm -hmm. then um, the next, I think the next option for that would be a dispersion, to provide something that that didn't, that got rid of a concentrated flow. Okay. Okay. Yep. And you also wanted it changed to Ridgewood Road yep. from Ridgewood High. Yeah. Correct. You still want to look at the site? I do. I, I don't want to approve a line. But yeah, that we I don't can see. understand that. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, so Saturday or Saturday? I assume you've been listening either Saturday the 18th, this Saturday, or Saturday, July 2nd. I'm we not available this weekend. Um, OK. If someone else that wants okay. to. OK. Um, can we get back to you? I, I'm not available July 2nd, so it would have to be somebody else from my office. Um, if you want someone there that you're approving the line to discuss yes. that with, that would be me. OK, so will you stay in touch with Kathy? Cause um, at this point, we don't know which day it's going to be. Either it'll the be one or the other, or the right. second. Maybe both. Uh, <laughs> that no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any uh, any questions or comments from about us, members of the public? Okay. So then we'll see you on one of those Saturdays. Now, if it is this Saturday, can you get those calculations that fast? I can. I'll I'll get in touch with the surveyor tomorrow and ask. Um, the surveyor is going to do the uh, runoff calculations? No, no, but he would be the one who would have the engineer that he uses okay. to do those. So okay. that's why I would get All in right, touch with enough. him. And um, I am going away as of Thursday. So. All right, that's good. <laughs> just, just stay in touch with Kathy, because we should know by, what, tomorrow, Kathy? Which day? I hope so, yeah, because we need to post it by Thursday morning. That's Correct. right. That's right. That's great. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are these flags? The flags are there. What? No, yes. you know. okay, when the future leaves yep. town Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need those, those plans that we just looked at for our files? No, those architectural drawings? Because our plan says, see architectural drawings. It says it right on our plan. But do we you want the plan with a 25 foot non disturbed Oh, um, that, yeah, but that goes on our plan. Okay. But my question was... Well, it would be the roof plan. The thing that you want to see is the roof plan. And it's right. really just about the, the <clears throat> control, catching the, the rain, the gutter and the... Yeah. All right, Christy, did you, did you hear that? Yeah, we need a roof plan. Well, yeah, if you could include the roof plan and then a sketch of the proposed strategy for the rainwater control, whether it's a dry well or whether it's dispersion. Okay. Just a sketch of the site plan of how you're going to plan on doing that. Yeah. Okay. Do you need that by the site walk? Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, because we can vote on it. It's a public meeting, so we can take care of it right there. Yeah, we can, we can approve it or on the spot if everything's good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay, next on the agenda is 751 Blue Hill Avenue.
Where did this go? Oh, did we? Did we not get anything? Uh, Jim just handed Jim. it to me. Yeah. I've never been clear on which Jim is which, quite honestly. But nonetheless, he told me to make sure these are distributed. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Kathy, can you remind us what we needed? We needed a revised plan because we were going to uh, move away from the tree that we were on. <coughs> All right, okay. Um, Oh, oh, oh. Uh, here we see the yeah. future garage in relation to the pool and everything. Yeah, good. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. And the pool shifted the location. Yes. Yep. By the way. That's a remarkable home. And the oh, tree. Thank you. Yes. There was a tree that you were taking down, right? There was a tree. No, not uh, the split. The current configuration. The, the split you tree. Save that. Oh, oh, there's a couple dead, dead a couple trees. Couple dead yeah, trees yeah, there yeah, in the very moment. Yeah. All right, and for members of the public, we actually were out at this um, site actually May 28th. Yep. So we've actually seen it and uh, made some suggestions, and the applicant has acceded to our wishes and then now your wishes too, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yeah, th I think this is, makes much more sense. Okay. And we'll, do, we'll save a couple of nice trees this way. Right. American Elm being one of them. Mm -hmm. right. And there were some dead ones that are going to be removed as well. Right. Yes. All right, do we have anything else? Um, the, the only thing I, I, I should remind you, I've said it before, and we've said it before, that we have regular uh, provisions in our orders of condition, and they include that you can't store equipment within the 100-foot buffer zone. Sure. And when I say equipment, I'm talking about you know, gas-powered, oil, you know, hydraulic systems, things like that, and you can't refuel within the 100 feet. Um, and you can see right here where the 100 feet is, so it's gonna, your equipment's going to have to be quite a ways away. As a matter of fact, we don't have 100 feet on this map, do no. we? No, we don't. And I'd like to see the large trees also indicated. On, yeah, and they're not. Um, by large, I mean uh, anything more than um, 6 inches in diameter. They should be on the map. All the trees on the lot are within a certain proximity of the proposed activity. I, I think the latter. I mean, it's right. a pretty big wooded area. Right. Okay. <laughs> a lot of trees. That's fine. Um, like in the area where the, um, I, I guess, is this a, a limit of work or is it yeah, erosion, hey, control. Hey, erosion control yeah. line? Yeah. Oh, there it is, yeah, proposed erosion, yeah. It's certainly within that area of the erosion control line, if you could, right. if you could map the trees there, and they just add the 100 foot. I, they, it's just, as you know, it's done automatically. So. Uh, I don't think you need an artist for it. That would be helpful. Um, but with those provisions, uh, any other questions? We've seen it? No, I think this is very responsive. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so we can, we can actually vote this conditional upon getting a new, a new plan with 100 foot and mapping the trees. Um, any about as members of the public that have a question? Uh, not hearing or seeing any. Any further discussion? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? <laughs> Done. Thanks. This is part of a building uh, permit application, obviously. So, what's the transaction or communication between you folks and them? Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Dead trees, live trees. Yeah. Well, the dead ones to be removed, noted as dead to be removed. Something yeah. just so it's clear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Again. Right, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Eight was Robin Street. That's continued, uh, and that's actually continued until August 9th. Um, Ten is order of conditions uh, 395 Hillside Street. That's been withdrawn. Uh, Eleven is informational cluster subdivision at 245 Highland Street. Good evening. Hey, good evening. Ned Corcoran with um, Martha, Burke. Martha Burke, who is the owner with her husband Dennis of an eight, approximately eight acre parcel at the crown of Highland Street, up the hill. At the crown, that sounds yeah. regal, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> up the hill That's from That's where you live, Milton isn't it? Yes, and directly the across the street from Lord, Judith Tower Camp. <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, the Burks have been preparing for some time to subdivide the property into a number of sm uh, smaller lots. It is in a residence A zone, so under typical subdivision, they would be allowed to get six lots for roughly one acre, 40,000 square feet, and then two larger lots towards the rear with the existing sort of uh, mansion style house that the Burks live in and a, and a lot that would contain an existing barn um, and whatnot. And this is sort of a, the schematic of the preliminary subdivision plan that was drawn that shows the frontage of Highland Street, uh, each of the four sort of new lots where the, which are currently vacant, a house with the Burks, the, the lot with the Burks re residence in the rear, and then the other lot in the rear. And when we presented this, Which, where's the barn? Barn is so the, and I'll, I've got some materials to hand out. Which, are, but the existing property, fronts on Highland Street. Uh, Judith Kemp is here. <laughs> um, and the barn, there's a driveway that comes in uh, off of an existing opening in the, in the stone wall that comes in. There's a barn and a garage here, and then the, the main house okay. back here. So we came before the, um, the planning board with the preliminary subdivision approval in February, I think. And there's a, there's a two rows of trees that line each side of the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. Some are more significant than others. Oh. But this preliminary subdivision plan in order to create the plan would have relocated the driveway to a new roadway and would have caused the elimination of both rows of trees and would have substantially eliminated a fair amount of dense growth um, which fronts the property and is around the property. And so the planning board asked us whether we had considered what's known as a clustered, uh, a cluster subdivision. It, the, um, there is a bylaw provision um, yeah, I'll pass it. <clears throat> Okay. Thanks. Um, so what I have um, here is a... Kathy, do you need one? I do need one. Yes. Do you have an extra one, Nick? Kathy. Thank you. So the, by, the, the cluster bylaw, which is section J, 3J or 6J, 6J of, the, of the zoning bylaw, allows a slightly an increase in density of lots based on a recalculation of lot size if with a goal to preserve 35% or more of the lot is open space. And so the way you calculate your unit yield is you look at a new subdivision using smaller lot sizes and frontages. So you would draw a typical subdivision plan, but the lot sizes would be 30,000 square feet as opposed to 40. And the um, frontage would be 125 feet as opposed to 150 for a residence A zone. So that's the, that's, the, that's the rhythmic tick that you use to determine how many lots you can get. So in that case, the subdivision plan would show eight lots as opposed to six. I don't have a copy of that lot that was, that plan that was drawn um, that will be filed as part of the application for the, for the um, the, the cluster uh, special permit. You then, it then says that if you have a lot that exceeds 350,000 square feet, I think is the number, then you can qualify for an additional lot. And so basically the, the bylaw says that you, once you've determined what your, your number is, you then can build lots, the building lots that are a minimum of 10,000 square feet. And they are, lots then are clustered so that you preserve open space. Right. You have a minimum lot size, and there's a, min, there's a maximum lot coverage for each such lot. I think it's 35% of each lot. Uh, and so in that case, it would have allowed nine 
clustered building lots. And had the Berks determined, what the bylaw would also allow a tenth lot if there's such a lot would be dedicated for affordable. So um, preliminary conversations with, with neighbors, the Berks backed off the nine. They weren't going to do the ten. Right. But they backed off the nine. And they've, they've come up with a plan that I presented to you that would be eight lots. So uh, not that it's our purview, but just a question. Um, a development like this compared to the six lot that you showed us, can, from a developer's point of view, can, you show, can it be shown that this lot layout is actually more profitable than a larger lot layout, which theoretically allows you to have larger houses and more room between the lots. Understanding you have a, a lower quantity, but the value of those houses probably outweighs the value of the houses you're building here because of the house spacing. We think, um, I mean, we've worked with some realtors, um, and the consensus seems to be that... More houses is better. Yeah, the, 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 the lot value yeah. on a per lot basis will be less right but with two extra lots there is a there is a uh, an economic benefit uh, to here to going this way yep there will be the bylaw requires for clustered divisions of fewer than 10 lots that there be a, a contribution made to the affordable housing sure. trust fund so on a per lot basis there'll be a calculation made and we're negotiating that uh, with the planning board um, so we th and we think that if, as you look at how the lots have laid out, while the specific individual lots may be smaller, you can still fit a reasonably sized yeah. house on it. These are um, the minimum, the, the smallest lot is lot one, which is 15,000 square feet of change. Yeah. The lots two, three, four, five, and six are all 20,000 approximately, right. which are, you know, residence B size right. lots, uh, half acre. Lots, still pretty good size yeah, lots. Yeah, that's a good lot. Um, and then the two larger lots in the rear are 46,000 and 40,000. So the real benefit, I think, is the, is the notion that other than lot five, which is the second one in on the left on the driveway, the rest of the lots are going to feel larger because they're going to be surrounded by the land that has been right. dedicated as open space. Right. And so they may be smaller in, in terms of their individual lot size, but they are but right. beautiful open area. And so what we're really here to talk about ultimately tonight is that there will be a con uh, either a form of conservation, conservation restriction or other restriction placed on the land. We're looking for an entity to park that restriction with, and the thought would be that the conservation which uh, has taken title to a number of sim in a number of similar instances might be the the entity in this case so we thought we'd, we'd we'd come present that to you if the planning board were to v vote to grant the special permit they would approve the dedication of the open land um, to an entity the Milton Conservation Land Trust no longer exists um, Essentially, you know, that was the John Crone and Ted Wendell, Peter Jeffries group um, for, um, I think, internal revenue and other reasons, it became important for them to divest. And so they've entered into agreements with the Wildlands Trust based out of Plymouth. That's a larger organization mm -hmm. with staff. Uh, and the thought is that this is really just sort of a preservation of the perimeter right, right. without the need for a whole lot of right. other access. It may, might be something that, that they might not um, really feel the need to get involved with. So um, the, 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 you know, we appreciate, I know that the, that the, that the um, Burks really appreciate the time that Judith has spent with them because they have molded sort of where these lot lines go part based on her uh, expertise as to where the where is the value from an open space perspective. Um, you'll note that the, the existing driveway does need to be widened. Mm -hmm. It's only, I think it's 12 feet. It mm -hmm. needs to get to 18 feet. The fire department will require that as, as, a, as now as a, as a way. And 
We're, the plan is to move the widening to the south towards Fletcher Steel, and that row of trees will go, but we'll preserve the, the row of trees that's on the, on the northerly side. A quick, quick question. So is the, is the widening of the road required because, because it's a two-lane road, or is it just because they need 18 feet for the trucks? It's a combination. So could you, uh, could you actually make the southern row of trees a, uh, a divider and, have, and basically put a second 12-foot lane south of the south trees so you end up with a divider <coughs> retaining all the existing trees and end up with a divided road that goes up and through the center. You could cut that as often as you wanted for driveways to allow them, but then you, you don't end up having to lose your second row of trees. And you end up with two driveways that are 12 feet wide rather than one that's 18, and you keep a lot more trees. You have a row of trees, <coughs> median strip with trees, and then... New trees, you could probably, yeah, you could, you could plant new trees, or not, not at all, but you'd have the double row of trees. And how would that affect the 35%? Would that have to come out of the 30 I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to save trees. <laughs> I, well, I, don't think I know would. the property so well, and yeah. I, you know, I have to say I've known Martha Burke for over 25 years, and we're, yeah. we're close friends. The trees on that south side are not great trees. They're not great trees. They're mostly London plane trees, yeah. um, you know, which is combination. No, no way maples. <laughs> no, they, <laughs> several of them are in fact diseased. <laughs> the better trees um, are on the north are, side. Uh, yeah, on the north side and in the corner and in the back, there are some pretty nice trees. Yeah. There's a red wing, uh, uh, red tailed hawk who's nesting over here that oh, really? we hear, you know, that sort of thing. And there are great horned owls periodically that come. Oh, nice. There's a lot of conservation land. Be, not conservation strike that. There's a big estate that is also behind here that they back up to. Yeah. So it's still open and so there's a lot of wildlife. Poor Martha is constantly dealing with <laughs> deer and turkeys. <laughs> Her magnificent garden often gets plowed down. So um, we, we thought about that. It's about seven trees, but they're not great they're trees. They're not great trees. Yeah, yeah okay. it's not for the added op you know, right. roadway involved. It, it would be a net loss, I believe. Yep. Just ideas. Just sure, another idea. Yeah, sure. be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, so the the fire department does require the wider, yeah, particularly the wider opening. Um, the idea would be to a sidewalk on the southerly side only, and, and the minimum width necessary for the roadway is required by yep. uh, the town. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's it'll be the first clustered subdivision plan that will have come before the planning board. Um, really? Yes. They have not received it. They, it was interesting when they asked us whether we had considered it. I hadn't at all. Yeah. So we were going with a standard subdivision, and uh, they asked us about it. And I had been, I've been pushed to look at it um, on another property, and it doesn't make sense in my mind on that property, but when I looked at it for this property, it's perfect. Right. You know, um, everything's set in from the roadway. Mm -hmm. The development inside will be substantially invisible to the rest of the. Sure. Uh, to, uh, to on all four sides, uh, it'll create a really nice, I think, high value, um, small cluster of enclave of of dwellings. Mm -hmm. The, the, the Burks, uh, one of the lots is going to go to their daughter, Jack, Jacqueline, who is going to build uh, the house, I think we think, what, lot six? Yeah, not the tiny um, And then the other, the other five lots that aren't currently occupied by buildings will be right. um, yeah. be made, sold it by some form of uh, either auction or sale or sure. whatever. But, um, and the, lo the houses, the footprints that are shown on those lots are Fairly good size. I don't know what the square footage is exactly, but they're decent yeah. sized houses, right. and there's plenty of room uh, on the lots for them. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't, at the same time, they're not McMansion, so they don't overwhelm. Uh, Just for reference, on lot six, that's my daughter's outline, and that is 3,400 square feet. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's a. The others must be 2,500 or so. So, the, what's interesting also about this cluster idea is that. Once you've identified your unit count based on a draft of a subdivision plan, is that you never you, you don't have to comply with the basic 
requirements of setbacks and lot frontages and whatnot. So you see lots four and five actually have m minimal frontage. They're right. pork chop lots with um, just a driveway yeah. opening. Um, so there are no requirements um, once, once, because the idea is to, is, to, is to mass the lots in such a way that you're preserving a maximum amount of open space. Mm. I'm surprised it's the first one that's come before them. I'm, uh, what about that? There was a 10-acre lot up at the end of Brescia Road at the Truman Highway end. It was a big house, and they put some um, tight cluster type things. Probably that's a, uh, that's 10, the, 12 years ago. Yeah, that's brushwood. That's a condominium project. That was uh, preservation of a couple of older, yeah, that's larger right. homes, and then so that's not, that's not, it's not cluster. It's it's um. Okay. It's right down the street from the lowest state. Lowest state, yeah. Ah, it's great. This is it's nice. Thank you. Well, I think yeah. I think you make a good point, Ned. That um, even though these are small lots, and people I've heard were concerned about, oh, all of a sudden, you know, instead of one acre lots, they'll be much smaller, and that's kind of disruptive. But in fact, with the open space adjacent to them, all of these lots, with the exception of five have much bigger areas. So we're still sort of preserving this sense of the country of almost an acre lot. So it's not that much of a change. And the better side of that is half of that area is being conserved. So to me, it's a definite win for conservation in that regard. Mm -hmm. yep. The other thing I, I think it, is the, the location um, across the street is, is Residence A and on the the westerly side of Highland Street is Residence A. As you go just down the hill from Clifton and the, the so the latter streets, that turns into a Residence B neighborhood. There's a fair amount of density mm -hmm. um, there. This this retains the the larger lot feel, right. but it's you know it's not being. I I think the location overall um, serves well, and, and um, you know the values that. You know, the, the demand that the Burks are hearing for people who want lining up to want the opportunity to purchase lots mm -hmm. is pretty significant. And um, there are a lot more people who have expressed interest than lots that are being, a, that will be available. So we think there'll be a pretty, if, we may, may be some sort of an auction, but those lots are going to go for a pretty good number. Premium. Yeah. 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 That's good. Um, good and I think we'll hold values we'll for see. in the neighborhood. So. We'll see. There is uh, substantial support. It's not unanimous within right. the neighborhood. Um, this is different. It's new. Uh, so there are some concerns. But I think in the bigger picture, I think it's the right thing to do for the property. And so um, we're going to move forward. We, we hope to be before this, the planning board for the formal hearing starting 14th of July. It's will either be the 14th or the 28th. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, what I'd like to do, suggest that I do, is, is put together a draft of a, of a grant of conservation restriction, either a form of a deed, and get it to Kathy so that you can review it, um, perhaps with town council, just to make sure it, it works the way it would need to from your perspective, if you would accept um, that grant. Well, I think we're easy. I think the, 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 and it's not a stumbling block, but we have to dot the I's and cross the T's with the state uh, we ran into the problem with uh, 88 Milton Street. We had worked out the language. They deeded us a conservation restriction, and then we had to get approval from the state, and it's, okay. it's still stuck. <laughs> oh, is it? It's still stuck, oh. and we still don't have that. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't yeah. know. Oh. Yeah. yeah, they have to bless it, and they changed all kinds. I sent it back to John Flynn. Oh, and okay. I think it's probably off of the radar at this point. But okay. this, this is a good opportunity to get it back, yeah. back in yeah. front of us. Yeah, and I'm glad. I'll, I'll reach out to you um, the next day or so, Kathy. Maybe I can get a copy of that and just make sure that I'm um, working off. And hold up is just the language? The they wanted to tweak the language? They somehow. did. Okay. Correct. Correct. And don't look at the one that the town has because that's the one that the state rejected. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, ca I can send you a copy of, because of, I get the comments back from the state. I sent that on to John. Okay. Uh, but I haven't heard back. Okay. So I, I can get you the one with all of their right. interlineations on it. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Does everybody agree, though, that it's a good idea? And oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Should yep. be more of them. Yeah, right. I'm one of the One of the Thank things that a lot of the, the, the Wildlands it's Trust... It's a win-win-win, in my opinion. Yeah, A win definitely. for us, a win for you, and a win for the neighbors. It's 
opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biased that it is. <laughs> Nine out of ten. <laughs> um, one of the one of the issues that comes up, and we should put it on the table, is that um, do we have the capacity to? Uh, you sent around that list of other conservation easements mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of land. We don't do much with it. Mm -hmm. We have no budget. We have no personnel. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons that John cited, John Cronin cited, for actually conveying all of the lands that they controlled to the Wildlands Trust because they have the administrative backup for it. Plus, they have a lot of money to pay people to go out and do the monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. I'm in favor of it, um, but I, but there are some people that would say, "Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to go out and you know walk around and make sure that everybody's you know not throwing trash in the open space?" And I'm not, I'm not being facetious because when we went up to the, uh, yeah, but it's a question. the valley, the Winter Valley, yeah. remember all the right. trash oh, yeah. we saw in the wetlands yeah. between Winter oh, Valley and Highland Street? Yeah. It's pretty bad. <laughs> so we, we need to be aware that you know, we, have, we might have more responsibility than we do the capacity to do what needs to be done. So we have to be, you know, it's, a, it's a kind of a sobering thought that we take as we take on sure. more and more Well, the other side of that, John, is that if this is the right thing to do and it is the right thing to do in other cases, then we have to build the plan for the town Correct. to provide the human resourcing to do what you're talking about rather than right. to avoid it. And that, and that becomes a warrant committee issue and then a town meeting issue it's fine. because it's money. Yep. Absolutely. Right now, we don't get cost spent on other. You get spent on other things. So I'm, I'm, I'm willing to join you in going to the mats on that one. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Because I do favor that. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for the time. Thank right. you. And Judith, thank you for your work. <laughs> yeah, which, which lot is yours? Anyway. <laughs> 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 <You're going nowhere. laughs> All right, thank you. That was number 11. Number 12, we've already addressed. That's uh, uh, Shade Tree Advisory Committee. Uh, they're coming to our September meeting, which leaves us at 13. Our last additional business. Do we have any? Yes. I, you first off. Go ahead. No, you go. Uh, just a continuation of what was put on the table at the last meeting on signage. And this is the, um, the original motion. Oh, good. With one minor modification, and that is the identification of the, the source. The name of the handbook. And in this, on the second page, you have what Kathy had passed out, um, the section from the handbook on signage. I attended the uh, trail uh, program that was conducted this past week by um, our friends in the Wildlife Trust down in Plymouth, and it was quite remarkable to see what towns uh, have, particularly from Marshfield down to the canal, then running west, Carver, Halifax, and so on down the line. And we have amazing resources as well. I think we saw some very clear examples at uh, Pope's Pond during the site walk uh, that would support signage. There's been some further dialogue with a couple of the people that we met and uh, taught us on that site walk, Joe and uh, Mr. Toma. <coughs> and we've seen enough violations and yeah. locations throughout the town. Yes. So. Do you remember years ago, John, at Curry College, when they were putting in the dorm, we had them put a sign up for the conservation area that they had to put yeah, a little. Right. I, I wonder what that sign looks like, if it's still there or what. <laughs> I'll drive right. by and see, but we did, we began, this was about 10 years ago. So the students Was it the know. dorm or was it when they put in the student center? It was the student center. That's what I it think was. so. And I yes. think there is a sign actually is right it? at the corner when you come in off of Blue Jay Drive. Okay. And you turn into the I'll take student a look center. And see. Yeah. 
But I think, I think that's so. the only one I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. right. I think um, he did some science with Sherman's porn too, about the wetlands. Oh. Well, that's right. On the boardwalk, right? On the boardwalk. On the boardwalk, yep. Huh. So, I'm sorry. So the proposal is to make, is to do what? Proposals that we have as part of the Milton Conservation Commission. Develop a signage program. A signage program. Who's okay. going to pay for it, Arthur? Well, John's sitting on three kitties that I've, I'm aware of. <laughs> <laughs> In some instances, volunteers may do it. Um, one of the towns has everything done for it by its counseling and aging. They identify the places, they give them the parameters for the signage, and they develop them. Um, I just another, think the Blue Hills Regional Tech would. Another town does right. that. Yeah. They do the regional tech and they do the high school. Yeah. Um, another town has a club in it that is a woodworking club. And a woman who belonged to that, apparently it's an old, old one in the town, and people will fight to get into it. Wow. And they, they do these projects. So there are ways in which sure. we can vet this and see if we, we get takers. And they have phenomenal types of signage now. They have ones that uh, are UV right. based. You've seen these. Um, you, the stable forever. Right. Yeah. And they, they give you great information about how to post them, square them, don't put them up so somebody can hit them with a baseball <laughs> bat or take them down. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, the AZAC like signage right. is really incredible uh, signage that. You can't put graffiti on, right. like graffiti proof. But the thing is that it gives a consciousness right. to the community, right. Right. which is the major thing. And it also prohibits the negatives, like we see. Dumping and, yeah. Clear cutting, dumping. Right. We've seen them on Lyman Road, and we've seen them on one of the other streets up that way. We saw some bad damage at Pope's Pond. And then just yeah, an right. awareness that, hey, this is, this is town conservation land, and conservation's important to the town of Melvin. And if it's not signed, nobody ever thinks about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think having the signage is good because it makes people aware of, what it, aware of what it is, and I think that people in general are more conscious of it and more protective of it, be, knowing what it is, as opposed to it just being an, uh, an undefined area that... that Things may be happening, but if you know that if someone knows it's a, that it's a, a restricted kind of area, yeah. mm -hmm. they're more likely to speak out when things are wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just think of that land going up Gal Road that the Conservation Commission has in back of Home Inc. Every day, hundreds of kids and right. parents would be passing yeah. there, and there would be an appropriate. You could do a very nice Milton Conservation. There is sign. a sign there. But it's buried. But a real nice one up front. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah with lights and flashing <laughs> things. Flashing, flashing <laughs> <laughs> you can take care of the pyrotechnics. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so you see Michael up there on the 4th of July. <laughs> All right, but now, you know, in the, uh, in the attachment that you just handed out, there are many reasons for signs, as indicated here, and some of them I, I agree with, but one of them says signs indicating hazards such as deer ticks and poison ivy. Um, I, I would I would not be in favor of a proliferation of signs that say beware of poison ivy. And, and these are these <laughs> are a lot of signs. Guidelines. <laughs> yeah. These are what okay. guidelines. Okay. They're not you must do. They're not okay. commandments. Okay. Right. They just cover the waterfront and then you menu. But it, it allows us to know that there's a like a professional resource that backs up our having a signage right. policy or right. program. All right, so that you're moving to adopt the following resolution as stated. Correct. Right? And it's, it's just to, for us to develop a program consistent with the best practices to utilize signage. Sounds like a good idea. Simple. Absolutely. Second. Second. All in favor? Indeed. And it's a resolution. All right. <laughs> okay, so the revolution? Other, Who said revolution? <laughs> <laughs> so the other question, I, next issue, is... Um, the transformer that was supposed to be oh, replaced wait, wait. by June, has it been replaced? I don't know. I don't know. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was looking at those papers earlier today. Okay. And wondering the same this is thing. It's mid-June and I thought, you know. It's right on the top today, of my stack. Our electric was half off. 
in because I was home all day. And um, when I called the electric company, we, I, some sort of a recording that they were working or something was down, and I wondered if they were. We, I didn't drive over though to see. But we should follow up on that to see. Can you find out? Yes. It? It's, it's right, quite important. Good. All right. Well, good. And then yeah, the last thing is we got this letter motion. about the Blue Hills, um, the oh, ski slope. Right. And, yeah, we should it, it include looks that on messy. the site. We should include we should. that on the we, site. We yeah. Because I, I thought that they were being going to be very, very careful. Right. That's is no that, meadow. Is that, the, is that at the top or is that actually it's where we It's about halfway up, isn't it? I couldn't tell where it was. I think that we permitted an area right next to the parking lot. To put in the new water line. No, I don't think this no, is that. This, I, I this hope is at the top of the not. ski slope. Right. No, I, I think right. this we should, is at the top of the ski slope. We should take a hike up and take a look at it. Yeah. Because th those pictures don't look very good. No. Yeah, I mean, a little she frightening. actually um, gave us more information who she was. There was no return address. Was yeah, no and she oh. signed it as Julie or something, but I, oh. I, she should put so, her name in lights. This is a, this is a great idea. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a it's an issue. If it still looks like it. So we should. Is it, a, is it an enforcement order and we should ask someone from the ski slope to be on site to tell us what was intended and why it wasn't finished? I mean... Well, the letter isn't addressed to us, it's addressed to... Who is it addressed to? Secretary Beaton, DCR. DCR. Okay. I, I think we should deal with DCR. I mean, they're the leaseholder. The lessee is the, the ski okay. slope. So we should, I'm just saying we should make sure that someone's there that knows what the history is of why it is the way that it I, is. I think that's true. So maybe both Does DCR that mean it's an enforcement order? In order... Oh, we have to see it first. Okay. But it could be. Okay. I think this is halfway up. You know, the, um, the paved trail on the right-hand side at the top of the ski slope. That's what it looks like. That's my memory. I, I could be wrong. It looks terrible. Yeah, it does. It really Remember does. we did a site walk... Uh, what about six months ago? For the water but installation. The, for the pump. Right. For the new right. pump. For the new pump. House. When we were up there, I took a walk up along the side. Yeah. I was amazed at the amount of debris. Oh. Just really? in the, on the slope? Iron, concrete. Oh. It's just incredible. Logs. Yeah. I was really surprised if this is DCR property. Okay, well, they would then, allow that type of Then we'll take the whole thing up. Negligence. I agree. So you add that to the site walk list? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And thing. if we can get someone from DCR or whoever's in charge to be in attendance, that'd be great. I agree. Uh, something um, we haven't heard from Milton Cemetery. No. Recently. About. Solo farm. About, oh no, we haven't heard you right. Yeah, so. I was just wondering if you had heard what, what is this no. author? I missed it. What is Solar farm that Milton Academy oh. is proposing next to Milton Cemetery. I, I don't know what happened. It just it's almost a down. year ago, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if after the spring Board of Trustees meeting, we might hear from them again about next can, steps. Can we reach out? Who is it? Um, who is it? I want to say Bob O'Connell is the fellow at, at uh, Curry. Who's, who's the um, uh, he just retired. facilities he, he manager? Retired. Yeah. Oh, did he? Retired, yeah. He's a nice fellow. Yeah. yeah. But there's a woman who, um, his name is escaping me right now, who's very, very good, and she's on at top Milton of that Academy. project. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is um, that triggered in my mind something I think you and I um, observed at the animal shelter, and that was a well. Oh, yeah. And... Did they not mention, did Tim not mention that there was a second well, but we couldn't identify that? Hmm. And do those wells have any implications hmm. for what we discussed earlier tonight? I'm sorry I didn't think of it at that time, yeah. but it just came to mind. Uh, I didn't see any wells. On the site walk, you saw yes, a we well saw or two one wells? Well, definitely one well. Really? And uh, was told that there was a second well. Was but it like an open Tim couldn't cistern, find it. No, cistern it was, it was enclosed. Was a pipe? It was a pipe. Yeah, capped. It stood about you sure it's not a methane release stood about, valve? No, it wasn't. It stood about four feet tall. Because mm -hmm. some of those in the slopes, when, when it was capped, they did put in some pipes to... Yeah, but they'd the be landfill. on the other side of the, the road landfill. in all likelihood. They wouldn't be... Yeah, that would have been the landfill. This isn't the yeah. landfill area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's close. You, but it would, that's built into the landfill. That's the part of the cap for the landfill. Right. Right, for right. I know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Vaguely, This is on the 28th when we were there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Actually, um, Tim, I don't 
Tim Bill's assistant was there, so I'll reach That's out right. to him. Okay. Yeah, okay. ask Tim. He was right. the one that pointed it out to us. Oh, it was. Well, that should be placed right. on, on the... When we took a walk into the flat field, mm -hmm. the well was right there. Okay. It was about four foot high. Three and a half. All right, just well, a pipe. And then there was a second one, Tim said, but he could not locate it. Right. And I think we ought to have those on the map and have an understanding of whether or not they have They're going to flatten and fill those, too. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, that term was a little scary, flatten and fill. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Um, That's tough okay. land. Oh, it is yeah. tough land. Very it tough. Is. One thing, I should have uh, brought this up earlier, but we've continued um, the hearing to a site walk. This is at uh, 7, uh, this is the garage that we're talking about. We're going to go out and take a look at it. On Canton um, Avenue. On Canton Avenue. This is uh, 1581. 1581. This is DEP's suggestion, and I, I should have said it earlier, but it says suggest reducing size of impact to buffer zone. That goes along with what you, you said. Try so to move it away. Just, try just to, to move it away. But we'll be able to see. Yeah. see. I think he made a good point that, you know, we're getting awfully close to the adjoining land, and there's a, a drop five, off. five yeah. foot drop on his land, and it probably keeps going. Right. <clears throat> but I, I forgot to mention that this is a DEP comment uh, okay. on the proposal. Yeah. So we should remember that when we're out there at the site walk. Okay. Right. Anything else? No. Jaron? Jaron? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Great.